Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I stand on behalf of myself and my family. And I declare that every altar that is speaking against my destiny. I tear it down tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Separate Toko Sotobash. I tear it down. Altars of delay. Altars of barrenness. Altars of failure. Hallelujah. Please pair yourselves two two. Find find a partner and hold a hand. Be serious, please. If the person by your side is not serious, leave him alone. We are doing serious business tonight. Find a partner and hold a hand. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Every legal access I have given for these altars to speak against me knowingly and unknowingly tonight I invoke the blood let the blood speak 
lift your voice and begin to pray every legal access every legal access every legal access i have given any altar of darkness shall Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone else. Look for another partner. Hold the hands of someone else. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of failure. I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, I tear you down. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of stagnation. I speak against you. I speak against you. I curse you by the God of heaven. By the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are really praying tonight. I'm seeing blood dripping on people. God is bringing so many miracles in people. We are still praying, please. We are still praying. Shalapakaya. We are still praying. Skatabariasa. I see altars on fire. We are still praying. We are making real contact with the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Altars that are territorial in nature. Fighting my destiny. Because of where I'm coming from. I prophesy tonight. Your hold is broken over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Altars associated with territories. Associated with territories. I come against you by the God of heaven. I come against you. Pray, pray. I come against you. Hallelujah. 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 Please help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years. But it looks like it has not manifested because every time it's reaching you, an altar lifts up. We are going to call it back. Are you ready to pray? 
Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every delayed blessing that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars tonight by prophecy I call you back to my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray and watch the God of wonders authorize the God of heaven and watch restoration happen in your destiny Restored finances, restored mantles, restored ministries. Shabra kala la 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 bos, la kala bos, la kala bos, la kala la 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 bos, la bra kala koto sobre kesia, bra kala koro sobre kesi la 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 la. Pray, pray. El preto soto preto soto soto tele, e kenya santa banda kaskolea. Let your prayer be heartfelt. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to call the name of your family members. Listen, I don't care how many, call it. Listen, you are going to call them one by one and say, I stand as an altar and I bring you out of this dungeon. Lift your voice and pray. Call them. Call them. Call them. Mention them by name. Call them. I bring you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Be serious. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the north. I speak to the south. Everywhere my favor is. In the name of Jesus. I command it to my life now. Lift your voice and pray. You don't have to travel. Call it everywhere it is. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. Listen. I want you to pray and talk to God. Tell Him, Lord, I'm part of this apostolic family. The altar you have erected here must speak for me. I want my life to show it from today. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with understanding and watch what happens to you. 
pray with understanding pray with understanding pray with understanding Lord I inform the altar that you have with your servant pray with understanding pray with understanding I declare it. Many of you may not realize what is happening to you. Please, I don't want you to idolize this teaching. No. It's not about religiosity. It's about proper understanding and application. So it's not just coming to lie down here. That, no, 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 no. The altar is a revelation. We are going to pray right now and activate back our prayer lives. Listen. Because many of us here, the only time you pray is when you are together with people. Satan started attacking you. He gave himself a five-year plan to attack your prayer life. He will never attack it at once. He can give himself a five-year plan and be destroying you. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit of prayer and supplication, the grace to pray, I receive it right now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Fire. Fresh fire. On my altar. Fresh grace. To pray. Fresh grace. To fast. Fresh grace. To intercede. Fresh grace. For warfare, I command every dead prayer life around my life, come back to life, come back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and I will pray for you. There are many of us, the Spirit of God started revealing things to you because you were meeting with Him every day. But something happened, no more visitation of the secret place and that portal closed over your life. No access to illumination. You used to be, you used to have projects that you and God are on. You can literally say we are on a faith project. But now there's nothing like that. Your life has become stale and barren. Some of you is when you started ministry. This, this so-called thing called ministry. That's what destroyed you. We are going to pray a prayer of restoration. And the fire will fall upon you. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Say Holy Spirit. I ask that you manifest yourself once again in my life holy spirit i cry for intimacy afresh with you lift your voice and begin to pray intimacy spirit of the living god do not be far from me again pray pray let it not be that you are just a stranger we were closer than this and something happened
lift your hands. I tell you, there will be there will be testimonies upon testimonies. I pray for you now. I'm praying for you. In the name that is above all names. Everyone hearing me and standing here, whether inside or outside, you have prayed. If there is any altar as I speak now that is speaking against your life, at the count of three, I command those altars to catch fire right now. Please get ready. The power of God will come on people. One, two, three. I command those altars now. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. I command those altars be broken. Be broken. Listen. Lift your hands. I'm challenging altars of failure. Listen. Just, I'm praying for you. Don't pray. Just listen to me. Because I'm seeing people here. Failure. It has nothing to do with academics. It makes you fail in everything. I stretch my hands. May that fire anyone here who is a victim, that altar is speaking. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now by fire. I judge those altars now. There are altars that cause men to see things and never handle it. You see a job, they tell you it's yours. Quarter to reception, everything changes. I don't know who belongs to that category, but in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, following online, anyone who has been a victim, of total failure and disappointment right now in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus I command total deliverance help them help them please total deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ put down your hands ladies keep your hands lifted I will tell you why I'm praying for you there are many ladies let me tell you many people don't know why things don't work especially for ladies it's not because you are ladies and it's not because you are bad it's because many ladies are spiritually ignorant of what they represent in the realm of the spirit a lady is not just another human being who is not a man no it's more than that a lady is the chiefest point of entrance even among men that's why she has a womb the only lady who a lady is a gate in the realm of the spirit it's not just a human being keep your hands lifted that's why demons look for them that's why spirits look for them that's why altars speak against them it may not be caused by you but i'm praying for you keep your hands lifted you may not understand what is happening lord jesus i'm praying now that any one of our sisters here whose family and destiny is under siege shakas I'm declaring anyone who made a covenant with the earth for your destiny anyone who passed through fire to make a covenant with your destiny in the name that is above all names I decree and declare upon every lady now be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus from those yokes those yokes that cause fibroid, those yokes that cause fibroid, those yokes that cause lungs around your body, those lungs, those barrenness, I cause it by the God of heaven. I cause it by the God of heaven.
Hallelujah. I'm seeing 11 ladies. The Lord is opening my eyes. Listen now. I'm seeing rings on all their 10 fingers. And this is a very serious demonic case. And the Lord wants to set them free now. You will not know it. It's not something you know. One of you used to see it physically. You see rings on your hands. In the name of Jesus. 11 people. Ladies especially. I'm praying now. Some are inside. Some are outside. Doesn't matter where you are. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. Lord, I pray, whoever came into this meeting, whether online or offline, and belongs to that category, in the name of Jesus, as I'm praying now, I command, I'm praying now, the fire will fall on certain people. Eleven in all I see. Lord, let it be right now. I, I break that marriage. I break that spiritual marriage. I break that spiritual marriage. My God, my God, my God, my God. I break that spiritual marriage. There's one of them you should have married. But this is what stops everybody that comes around you. I command it broken right now. 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 Hallelujah. Our time is gone. The Lord is asking me to minister to someone here. Somebody comes to you in the night physically. I'm not talking of vision. Physically. You feel somebody lying down around your bed. Sometimes sleeping with you. You are feeling it. This is not guesswork. This is something you know is happening. Wherever that person is. Right now in Jesus name. I stretch my hands. There is no escape. In the name of Jesus, whether inside or outside, you are in this category now. I command judgment. Judgment on any strange spirit. Judgment on any stranger. Judgment on any stranger. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know, but we're rounding up. Please just, just be patient with me. I'm hearing in my spirit Yoruba people. Yoruba people, there is there is something, a deliverance that God is bringing now to Yoruba people. You know how God acts as I'm speaking now. Everyone associated with that territory, I place the word of God now. In the name of Jesus, let that sword of deliverance, I command that double-edged sword to locate everyone from the southwestern part now. Who is in need of territorial deliverance i command it now inside and outside in the name of jesus no escape no escape for any power of darkness Every mark of disfavor that is on anyone's life here, you watch what happens to your life from this meeting. Anyone carrying any mark of disfavor where men should bless you something about you becomes an irritation i command that mark to be erased from your life now ah, i command that mark to be erased from your life now i command that mark to be erased from your life now I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I'm watching what is happening from the spirit realm, not the physical realm. When you see me, keep praying. Let's lift our hands to Jesus. Let's lift our hands to Jesus tonight and bless his name. The Bible says he is good and his mercies endure forever. Go ahead and bless him. Father, we honor you and we thank you for tonight. 
Is someone lifting up a sound of worship, a sound of gratitude, a sound of honor? We bless you because you are God. We bless you because you are king. It is in your light that we see light. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. One generation will declare your praise to the other. Someone give him thanks. Give him quality thanks for the next one minute. I choose to be grateful. I choose to be thankful. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Now ask him to speak to your heart. We've had moments of extensive praise and worship. The Bible declares that the entrance of his word gives light and understanding to the simple. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, we pray that you will speak to us tonight and let our lives change forever. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you again for this opportunity to bring the word of the Lord. I'd like us to please um, help me help me celebrate and appreciate Pastor Emmanuel. Can you give him a big, big God bless you? Is this how you celebrate your pastor and his dear wife? Hallelujah. First, first for, for his visionary leadership and then second, celebrating the grace of God upon his life even on this special day. One more time, let's give him a big, big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. And I honor every pastor. And thank you so much for this opportunity. May the Lord bless you, sirs, in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Let me encourage you to be silent. Um, as much as possible so that we can hear the Lord speak to us tonight. Hallelujah. Can you encourage your neighbor to, um, as much as possible, to be silent because in your silence you are able to listen, you are able to hear. When I came in, I met very powerful worship going on and um, may God bless, bless his mistrials in Jesus' name. Every time the word of God comes, it comes with a key that opens up any destiny that is willing to listen and willing to learn. Hallelujah. The word of God is likened, listen carefully, the word of God is likened to light. And the Bible says in John 1 and verse 5, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. That means when the word of God comes, it comes to drive away darkness, to drive away confusion, to drive away stagnancy. You may have heard me say it, but it bears repeating that God's method is always his word. His method to heal is his word. His method to lift is his word. His method to bless is his word. Hallelujah. So every time the word of God is coming, your assignment as a believer is to be discerning, and to receive like the Bible encourages with meekness the engrafted word. If that is you, shout a loud amen. Yeah. By the way, I understand there are many overflows tonight. And I understand there are so many people. If you are in any overflow aside from the main auditorium, can you shout a loud hallelujah? A believing hallelujah. Let the devil hear you. Let's give them a big, big hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm teaching along the theme. I just thought to share something that I truly believe will be a blessing to us tonight. Psalm 102 and verse 13. Psalm 102 and verse 13. Psalm 102 and verse 13. I'll read. It says, Thou shalt arise. 
and have mercy upon Zion. It says, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Can we read it together? One to go. Verse 13. Thou shalt arise, uh -huh, and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time. Hallelujah. Now, theologically speaking, there are two reasons why Jesus cried. The Bible records that Jesus cried um, two times in the Bible, according to the synoptic accounts. Number one, the first time Jesus wept was in John chapter 11 and verse 35. This was when he came to the tomb of Lazarus. The Bible says Jesus wept. And the people say, oh, how he loved him. He wept as a, an expression of compassion over Lazarus who had died. The second reason why Jesus wept or the second occasion is found in Luke chapter 19. When you read from verse 42, Luke chapter 19, please. The Bible says that Jesus wept over Jerusalem and he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. In fact, let's start from verse 41. He says, when he was come near, the Bible says he beheld the city and wept over it. 42, saying, if thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace, it says, but now they are hidden from your eyes. So listen carefully, two reasons why Jesus wept. Number one, he wept as an expression of compassion over Lazarus who had died. And then the second reason was when he beheld the ignorance of a people. He saw that these were a people who were like sheep without a shepherd. They were confused. And he saw what they could become, but have not yet become because of the bankruptcy of light. The Bible says he wept not over a person. He wept over a city. Hallelujah. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32, very instructive scripture there, 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. 1 Chronicles 12 and 32. The Bible says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. Take note now. Not just understanding of the things. They were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The Bible says the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. Write this down if you're writing. God is a God of times and seasons. This is a very simple but profound truth that as mighty as God is, he has chosen to operate with man within the frame of times and seasons. Say times, times and seasons. One more time, say times, times and seasons. Human activities also happen within the frame of times and seasons. Are we together now? That means nothing happens on earth until a time is allotted to it. Are we together? God is a God of times and seasons. Human activities happen within the frame of times and seasons. There's no time we would have looked at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Very popular scripture. It talks about a time for several things. In fact, it says to everything. To how many things? Everything. That includes your breakthrough. To everything. That includes your lifting. To everything. That includes your rising, your shining. It says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the earth. Can you imagine that? Very instructive statement. So it is not enough to know what needs to happen in your life. You must also understand divine timings. There are people who have found God's purpose for them, but they still have not been able to manifest it because purpose did not coincide with time. You would hear the prophets who say, according to the time of life. Hallelujah. Now, for the purpose of our discussion tonight, there are many words that are translated time as we have in the Bible, but two of them are my concern as far as our discussion uh, is tonight. Number one 
is called Chronos. C H R O N O S is called Chronos. Chronos means sequential time. Time as we know to measure moments. So Chronos is a word that is translated time. It means the passage of time, like minutes, hour, seconds. That is Chronos. Are we together now? That is the first word that I want us to consider, sequential time. When you talk about chronos, you mean time as it is passing in seconds, in minutes, in hours, in days, in months, in years. But the second word that I want us to look at and that forms the basis for my discussion tonight is called kairos. K-A-I-R-O-S. One more time. K-A-I-R-O-S. This is the second word that is translated time. Kairos means opportune time. Opportune time, it means defining seasons. Kairos means an opportune time, defining seasons. You just write them and I will explain that to you. Kairos. Now, please look up. Say, for instance, a student is in school, secondary school. JS1, JS2, JS3, you can call that chronos. That is time passing. But there are moments in that student's life where if he fails a particular exam, he will not go forward. Am I, am I right on that? There's his junior YEC as we know, and then the senior YEC. That student can afford to toy around with first term, second term, but once he's writing his final exam, he's in a Kairos moment. You get the point now? These are moments that if you miss them, it will take the grace of God. Listen, in every man's life, there are these moments of chronos every day. But there are prophetic moments called kairos. And if you do not know how to maximize that time, imagine that Joseph missed that opportunity to stand before Pharaoh. That was a kairos moment. Are we together now? This is very important. So remember I said that God operates based on times and seasons and that human activities operate within the frame of times and seasons and that we have time as we know as chronos the passage of time and kairos defining you may even want to call them prophetic seasons in a man's life i give you an example in john chapter 5 there was a man who lay at a pool called bethesda is that in your bible and the bible says that at a particular time that is chronos not every time. A particular time, the angel would come to stir the water and whoever was the first to jump into it, that person would be healed of whatever infirmity. There was a man there who stayed for 38 years. The problem of that man was not ignorance. He knew that the activity of the angel on the water could heal, but the problem is that he did not know how to connect knowledge to timing. Listen carefully. He had knowledge. He was not in ignorance. And yet, one year became 10 years. I'm sure he said, after 15 years, I'll be fine. 15 years became 20 years, became 30 years, became 38 years of affliction without ignorance. He had knowledge from day one. When Jesus came and met him and said, will thou be made whole? He said, listen, you don't understand. Uh, every time I want to step in, the problem is not knowledge. is that I always miss the timing. And missing the timing makes my knowledge look useless. Because my knowledge is not able to profit me because it does not coincide with timing. Are we together? Now, someone who does not even know that that water should heal. If he's able to move in first, everybody say first. first. Say first. first. That's the rendition in John 5. It was not about who was more knowledgeable. It was about who could maximize time. Anyone who could jump in first, the Bible says that person was healed. And for 38 years, a man who was full of knowledge 
but did not understand that the dealings of God with men works within times and seasons. Tonight I'm revealing to you why many of you know so many spiritual things and yet your life may not seem to make progress. The problem is not ignorance. The problem is you have not known how to merge knowledge with timing. Hallelujah. Write this down. There is a dimension of grace and beauty that is attached to every season. There is a dimension of grace and beauty that is attached to every season. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. Please give it to us. I want you to understand my teaching tonight. The Bible says he hath made how many things? Please look up. He hath made everything or all things beautiful. Not at every time. Everything is not beautiful at every time. It's beautiful in his time. So beauty and grace is also connected to timing. Please look up. How many of you have seen a tree grow and blossom and then bear fruits that you later would eat? Did you know that sometimes when you look at the fruit that someday you'll be paying money for, there's nothing that looks like beauty and glory there because the time has not reached. For instance, an orange. For instance, a mango tree. For instance, a purple tree or avocado. Sometimes when you see those fruits in their formative seasons, they are not attractive. In fact, you will pass them with such disdain, but give them time. Something begins to happen with time. Listen carefully. And then the tree you once ignored, now you can stand in, in front of that tree. Some would employ all kinds of skills. They will climb the tree. They will use sticks to pluck down whatever. Something, time, now made that thing become beautiful. Hallelujah. Have you tried to pluck mango that is not ripe and then try to bite and eat it? You will end up being angry with that initiative you took. Am I right on that? But if you are patient and you watch a juicy red or yellow mango, you pull it down and you enjoy it, you can turn it into whatever it is. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful. That means if someone looks at you and says your life is full of shame, just tell him, give me something is happening. Ah, I know I'm praying and it does not look like there is profit in my prayer. I'm studying. I've not yet evolved to that version of me. Just give me time. The Bible says, and Jesus increased. It's a function of time in wisdom. Are we together? In stature, in favor with God and with men. If you looked at the baby in a manger, you would, not want, you would not believe that that baby in a manger would one day become the savior. If you looked at the teenager, you, the teenager could not call other people and say, come follow me. No, nobody would follow that teenager. But with time, hallelujah, time is powerful. Time is a mystery. Did you know that when a woman gives birth or has her child come out and it is not time you don't call it delivery there is another name you call it not because what came out was not a child but it came out not according to time am i right on that so time can even define the names of things that one moment you are praying let this baby not come out i thought the baby was supposed to come out one day the problem was not the baby. The problem was time. And then another day comes and you are praying and say, Lord, it must be today. This baby must come out now. It says, thou shall arise and have mercy on Zion. It says, because see, the person who is praying that prayer took time to understand times. The problem was not the prayer request. The problem was timing. It says, Lord, I have such, I know something about you. It is the season where you arise and you have mercy upon Zion. And he gives him the reason why. He said, for the time to favor her, yea, the Kairos time. The time to favor her, the time to lift this family, the time to roll away their shame, the time to give them a new name. He says, yea, the set time. 
So a father buys a car and intends to give his son one day, but he refuses to give that son, no matter how that son cries, until he gets to a, a stage called 18. Say time. And the same boy who was struggling for that car, the father would call him of his own volition and say, gentlemen, you are of age now. You are of age. An heir, as long as he's a child, he says he differed not from a slave, but he be under, I mean, even though he be lord of all, but he's under tutors until the time appointed. Can you imagine that? That Jesus himself, as he walked upon the earth, the father never made any proclamation upon him, not because he was not Jesus, he was waiting for a particular time. It was until Jesus got to age 30, then he went to John, being baptized of John. The Bible says he came out of the waters and the heavens were open. And God said, this is my beloved son. Question, what was he before? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Kairos moments. Kairos moments. There are many, many people who do not understand. Listen, I have watched people who are destined for greatness. Pay the price to get knowledge. But they do not know that there is timing. And listen to me. Do you know these Kairos moments I'm talking about? In a man's entire lifetime, you may not have more than 10 of these seasons. Believe me when I tell you this. 10 of these seasons in your entire lifetime. So when you find those who you call great... It is not just a function of knowledge alone. It is that by the mercies of God or by the privilege of mentorship, they have been taught like the sons of Issachar to discern times. The Bible says, and of the children of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the times. The wise men in the Bible, the Magi, what made them wise? Their ability to use the constellations to understand time. When they saw a star, other people would say, wow, the earth is so bright. And those guys said, no, this is a signification that something is happening. A Messiah is born. Let's go and check the archives. And they checked it. They said, no, we will go and look for him. Hallelujah. Say seasons. Say time. This is very powerful. Time is so important. The Bible tells us in Psalm 90 and verse 12. Give it to us please. Psalm 90 and verse 12. It says, so teach us to number our days. Why? That we may apply our hearts to wisdom. There is a relationship between wisdom and time. That when a man does not understand that life is a function of times and seasons, there is a level of wisdom that does not happen in the life of that man. Is someone learning already? John chapter 9 and verse 4. Please pay attention. I want to establish a few things. John 9 and verse 4. Jesus is speaking and he said, I must walk the works of him that sent me. When? Anytime. Jesus himself said, my assignment, as much as I know my assignment, I understand that there is a timing component. While it is day, someone say, while it is day. Now, while it is day for the night comet, I must establish that relationship while it is day for the night comet. I must invest in prayer now before I have... I start having children for the night comet. I may not have the liberty that I have now as a young lady in the next 10, 20 years. It says, while it is day, for the night comet when no man can walk again. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 17. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and he says, see then that ye walk circumspectly. The word circumspect is accurately, as, as wise, not as fools, but as wise. He says, redeeming the time. What does it mean to redeem? To redeem means to buy back using something in exchange. Listen carefully. To redeem means to buy back using something else in exchange. He says, redeem the time. Because the days are evil. It says, therefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the Lord's will is. Listen, 
When I learned this principle, my life changed. There are many people who do not understand their days of visitation. Do you know, imagine the woman in Luke chapter 18. Imagine that on the day Jesus came, she was not in church. She would have missed that season forever. It was because she was present. Are we together? The Bible talks about a man who was so crippled, his friends understood that Jesus being within his vicinity was a Kairos moment. They would not take no for an answer. The Bible says they were so determined to see him healed, they tore the roof and brought him in. In other words, we will negotiate with the owner of this house later. But as for now, we know it is not easy to get Jesus. How many people can heal? How many people can cast out devils? We have discernment. This man is the son of the living God. And whatever pride we will pay we will discuss the casualties later but as for now let a man's destiny change first the woman with the issue of blood I hope you know in one of the synoptic accounts Jesus was on his way to centurion's house to honor him he said I will heal your daughter who had died the day that daughter was born that was the day the woman's issue started they were all 12 years old so the woman said, listen, you have pain. You've lost a 12-year-old daughter. I sympathize with you. But the day she was born was the day my own trouble started too. And the Bible says, she said, if I may but touch, I will never have that chance again. Now that I have this moment, I know that it, the Bible says she said to herself, Kronos, we don't know how long she kept rehearsing what she would do. But we know that when Jesus came to pass, she said, I will face the consequences later on. But this is a moment I cannot afford to miss. And the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? The disciples said, no, you are, you are speaking unwise. Many people are all over you. He said, no, there is a woman who has maximized her, her kairos. This woman understood she virtue has flowed out of me. Read the Bible. Those who prepared for this moment were never disappointed. Never disappointed. Those who took it for granted. There were people who met Jesus just once. Did you know blind Bartimaeus? when you study your scripture, Jesus was passing Jericho for the last time. He would never return there again. And blind Bartimaeus understood this. And he said, thou son of David, could this be my moment today? Have mercy on me. And wicked people whose eyes were seen, they said, keep quiet. Beware of those who encourage you to waste your Kairos moment. They may not be there to face the consequences of your aborting time and destiny. The Bible says he cried yet the more. And Jesus stopped and said, what would I do? And he says that my eyes be opened. And he touched him and that was it. Hallelujah. There are many people who miss opportunities to rise even in life within the cosmos because they did not understand the power of timing. The Holy Spirit kept prompting you, go and greet your uncle. He does not come into worry every day, but now he's around and he's even around for one week. That greeting would have given you the capital you needed to start business. That greeting would have opened you up to a very new and strange and prophetic season. But by procrastination and carelessness and lack of discernment, you allowed certain seasons happen. There are many men of God, the mantle upon your destiny was in the hands of careers but the day they were around you were careless he did is any day is he not this man of God I will meet him one day I will meet him somewhere I know how I will meet him times and seasons I can tell you stories upon stories in my life where I took advantage of certain moments that if I did not take advantage of those moments, it would take the mercy of God for me to draw back the blessings that were connected to that moment. Hallelujah. All the sons of the prophet were careless 
After all, Elijah is a prophet. He knows we will eventually receive the mantle. Elisha said, no, I'm seeing the body language of this man. He's living. I will not go. I will follow you from Gilgal down to Jordan. And he said, leave me. I'm not going anywhere. Jacob was careless about this Kairos moment. In Genesis 28, the Bible says he lay down in loss to sleep. And he saw a ladder that connected the heavens and the earth. Am I right on that? And the Bible says, he even said the Lord was in this place. And I knew not. Do you know the consequence of missing that season was a total period of 20 years of misery in his life in the house of Laban. For missing that season. The next opportunity would come after 20 plus years. Now in Genesis 32, the Bible says he dismissed his wives. He dismissed his cattle when he was alone. He said, this time I will not miss it. Suddenly a stranger comes and he holds on to him. He said, leave me for the day break it. After my 20 years of carelessness, I have learned by experience the value of your presence. He said, I will not leave you. I will not let you go unless you bless me. The name Israel was not given as a gift. It was a man's maximizing a Kairos moment. Hallelujah. A Kairos moment. I will not let you go until you bless me. What is your name? I am Jacob. Thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel. For as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He touched the hollow of his thigh and the Bible says he blessed him there and the sun arose. He called the name of that place Peniel. For I have met God face to face and my life is preserved. Many of you today whilst I'm speaking, if you are to be honest with yourself, you will see certain seasons where some anointings would have come upon your life if only you were determined you heard about a meeting that was happening and it was so close to you but the discipline to get up and wait there and you thought by next week you will meet that man then you heard the man is now dead how many of you had an opportunity to see Reinhard Bonke? You said one day. How many of you had an opportunity to pursue certain mantles, certain graces, and you gave all kinds of flimsy excuses? How many of you had the opportunity to go for certain trainings that will cause you to rise? You didn't know that there was an age restriction. You said any year, after three years, now when you were ready, they said you are too old for it. Listen, let me tell you. The, one of the greatest manifestations of wisdom in your life is to know that every time does not fit for everything. When you buy a product, there's something they write at the bottom or at the side of it, best before. Everybody say best before. One more time, say best before. That means to get the most of this product, this is the time period you are allowed to consume this product. If you attempt to consume this product outside of this time range, it is at your, you are at risk. You will not get the best and you will not get the most. Hallelujah. I know that at any period is, is better late than never. But do you know someone who gets born again at 15 years and another person who gets born again at 60 years do not tell me they have the same advantage. In Christ they do. But one person has the luxury and the advantage of time. Are we together now? The 60 year old man, by the time you say you want to lock yourself for three days, your child's school fees issue will bring you out of that fasting period. Am I right on that? The young man can afford to stretch that much because he still has the privilege most likely of being under his parents. Prophetic timings are very, very important. Many of us have missed seasons. Many of us have missed moments. Many of us have missed mantles and graces. Many of us have missed prophetic connections that would have served as a leverage for us. Thou shall arise and have mercy. You see why mercy is in the equation? Because without mercy, that, that the issue of maximizing time cannot be possible. Time. Time. Read your Bible and watch people who miss out on prophetic moments 
prophetic moment. The woman at the well, that was a Kairos moment. She did not waste it at all. The madman in Gadara, that was a Kairos moment. He did not waste it at all. Unfortunately, there were people who were around Jesus' crusade. They ate bread, they watched miracles, but they were never transformed. Because to them, it was like every other day. Woe betides the student who gets up and finds out that tomorrow is Wayek and he's not been reading. Now you see, the way Kairos and Kronos works is, listen, Kronos is the gift God gives you to prepare for Kairos. That means every day counts. Your maximizing opportune moments is a product of your preparedness. Are we together now? The day that God will line up your destiny help as man of God and now give you the mic and you have the opportunity to preach or pray and that now opens a new door to your ministry. That manifestation will not just happen that day. It will be a summation of years and months of preparedness. Am I right on that? I think it was BJ Sachs when I, I, we were in the office and he was, he was the one pastor, he was ministering. And I nodded my head. I said, oh, this gentleman is so anointed. He, I mean, I was, I was watching how excellent they were. Now, you will say he's lucky or you will say it's God's grace. That is the language of mediocre and respectfully speaking, very foolish people who do not understand that what happens, God can open a door now. Someone can see this gentleman and say, you know what, come. There is somebody I want to introduce you to and that becomes a new season. Whereas someone who has been praying and fasting does not know. Listen, according to the law of time and chance, everybody on earth must have a Kairos moment. It is not a prayer point. In God's justice system, he programmed it that provided you are alive based on the law of time and chance it's a time and chance happening to them all that means one day your destiny helper will pass you one day the mantle you are looking for will pass you whether you have trained yourself to discern it or not will mean you continuing in that realm or rising to a higher realm man of god you are trusting that god will announce you as a worshiper are you preparing for that Kairos moment? Moving around with your invitation card is nonsense. That's not how to prepare for Kairos. Show me the songs you have written that you trust God will grant you to sing to the nations. Show me your consecration and your prayer and your fasting. Show me the rehearsals. Show me the discipline of waking up in the morning. Show me what you are learning about relationships. Show me what you are learning about leadership and management. Show me the them you are following who through faith and patience. And I will tell you, you are maximizing that season. Listen wishing for the day of opportunity is a waste of your time it will come preparing for it is how to maximize it hallelujah am I right on that so a young man is in the prison and he even refuses to bother about himself do you know why because he knew that with time, one day an opportunity will come for him to vindicate himself. And rather than bothering about himself, he was studying the countenance of his fellow prisoners. The man called Joseph. And he said, wine presser, you don't seem happy. Baker, you don't seem happy. Both of them said, we've had dreams. An opportunity to file his gift. An opportunity to refine his gift. He said, tell me your dreams for free at no charge. Talk to me. And they began to speak. You do not learn when you stand before kings. You learn in the wilderness. The presence of kings is not the place for rehearsal. It is the place for manifestation. Unfortunately, there are many people who keep praying and wishing, Oh God, bring the kings who will lift me. When they come, you are, when you do trial and error, you recycle seasons of pain. The stage is not for learners. The wilderness is for learners. Everybody God trains, he takes to the wilderness. John the Baptist, Moses, even Jesus. The stage is a testament of mastery. That you have worked with your chronos and you have built yourself. If you understand what I'm teaching you tonight, listen to me. It will be impossible for you to not arise. 
man of God, moving around with your CV and saying, oh, which, who is the senator now? Who is the house member now? It may not be a wise thing. Go and file yourself. Those who are running after greatness, listen to me. Those who are running after greatness, chasing it around, will never find it. Because that greatness is looking for certain kind of people. Become that person that greatness is looking for. Hallelujah. So the lady is quietly somewhere preparing, knowing that one day God has put the spirit of worship within my spirit and the nations will hear me sing. I don't have any human connection, but one thing I know is that there is a Kairos moment. I will use my chronos every day, the seconds, the hour, the minute, while other people are gossiping, backbiting, ill-wishing those who are manifesting. There is a young lady preparing and saying, Lord, I know you have called me to sing your praises to the nations. I may not have an uncle, a father, a mother but you be my witness as I train while others are sleeping she's maximizing chronos writing songs praying in the spirit fasting building herself going for trainings if need be I assure you by God's integrity you are watching a champion forming because one day someone will just say we're about to round up I hear you sing leave that one the connection is God's own ministry it's none of your business how it will happen are we together? Young lady, come. It looks like a coincidence, but you just called someone who has been training for one year and that lady will hold that mic in five minutes and you see God will position all her destiny helpers. Someone hears her and said, I just had something I've been looking for. What did you say your name is? Her limitations no longer become an issue. See me tomorrow. And you see that lady in one church. You see that lady in one program. And in two, three, four days, God leaves. And people say, you were so lucky. No, 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 no. So let me use this dear man, BJ Sax again. I don't play the saxophone. But trust me, I know that that thing is not very, it's not easy. You try it. I can borrow it from him and give you now. As anointed as you are, you blow that thing and the first thing that will happen, you will need to see a doctor because there is a skill. I've watched my dear friend and brother, Pastor Nat, play the trumpet and sometimes I'm like this man. You play that thing, your cheeks, you know how someone who has mumps, there's something called mumps, where your cheeks just becomes enlarged. There is a skill. You see, when you watch masters manifest, you are seeing a testament of the wise use of their chronos. It is so effortless. You will be mistaken to think. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Man of God, the stage is not where you come and quote wrong verses and say things you did not study and say, um, I know I researched it, but I'm not sure. Go back to the wilderness. The wilderness is the place of training. Use the stones as your audience. Use nature as your audience. File yourself. You are preparing based on the law of time and chance. I assure you by the integrity of God, your day will come. The Kairos moment will come. Someone will call you and say, help us wrap up this prayer. Five minutes. All that you will say in that meeting is, let us pray. That's the beginning of your manifestation. Someone will say, who is this brother? Next week, you will be the one to lead opening prayer. Someone will say, be the head of the prayer group. And then before you know it, after three years, here is a great man of God. Again, the language of mediocre. He is so lucky. Businessman, I'm into real estate. Is that true? What and what do you know about real estate? I have one land my elder brother gave me to sell. That is not real estate. Nobody will call you that way. Go back and settle down. Avoid. Listen, I'm speaking to you from my heart. Run away from premature manifestation. Use your days. Don't lobby for visibility. Go back to the backside of the mountain. It is God who brings men from the back to the front. There is a law. The Bible says when you enter a house, sit at the back. It's a principle. Sit at the back. Let your competence... Hallelujah. Thank you. Are we together? 
let your competence mix with timing bring you to the front. But if you decide to come and sit in the front because you know those who are sitting in the front, sooner or later your lack of preparedness will take you to the back and that in shame. And you see, human beings are very unforgiving. When you waste your Kairos moment, they mark you as a failure. Even when you train yourself, it will take grace for you to be elevated. Is someone listening? So whether you are a preacher, whether you are a businessman, I bring you a message that the dealings of God with men, please listen. It looks like certain people seem to be exceptional. No, the same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is while others are discussing greatness, while others are wishing greatness, coveting greatness in ignorance, there are others who know that life is an interplay between Kronos and Kairos. Apostle, why are my songs not getting to the nations? I have an answer for you. Show me what you are doing with your chronos. When you wake up in the morning and give God five minutes, give your destiny 10 minutes, give the most valuable people in your life 15 minutes, then give mundane things the whole day. How do you become a champion that way? There is no superstition with God. Do not forget that righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Because of systems of advantage like favor, listen carefully, mercy, many believers become lazy and irresponsible as to maximizing these seasons. They magically believe that just because they are saved, they are born again, God will veto these principles and suddenly make them emerge. No, sir. No, sir. Apostle, there's an attack on my life. I'm a tailor and uh, the people I know that I can sew for anybody. <clears throat> so who has called you now? Nobody. All right. What are you doing now? Recycling your current level or improving to a point that the day one king calls you, all his circle of friends, you become their tailor, all of them together. Can I tell you? I want you to make a vow that you will never enter the palace and have to be sent out again. Joseph made that commitment. In his pain, he did not allow offense to destroy him. He was building himself. Something tells me I am the prime minister. There's no way I can prove it. But I know. And he kept preparing. The Bible says, I love the Lord. He now says that Pharaoh had a dream. He had a dream and God shut the heavens over all the sorcerers. Nobody could see and know. And then the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. There was such and such a man. And they said, go and bring him. Your Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph. And they brought him out of his dungeon. Am I right on that? And when they brought him out, when he stood before Pharaoh, he shaved himself with the confidence of one who was ready for Kairos. Pharaoh, tell me your dream. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Look at that kind of confidence. And Pharaoh began to give all his dream. And I can imagine Joseph with quietness watching. And all the necromancers with their pride. Hoping that he will say, I'm sorry, I, I don't know the answer. Joseph laughed. He said, I found the answer. All your dreams, whether they are cows or wheat, they all mean the same thing. Seven years. And then when he said everything, he said, let me give you a further solution. Let the king find a man. Another way of saying, I dare you to search if you will get somebody like me. It was a polite way of daring him. Let the king find a man, discreet and wise. Set him over the economic operations of Egypt. And the king said, can we find such a man? Ladies and gentlemen, in one moment, without an interview, he said, I am Pharaoh, and only in the throne will I be greater than you. The Bible says they called him, they gave him treasures. Are we together? They gave him all kinds of names. And the Bible says that they put a signet ring upon his hand, and then he had an opportunity to marry Potiphera, the daughter of the priest of On. That was his blessing. How about David, the young boy? When he killed the lion, there was nobody to clap for him. When he killed the bear, he did not know that it was adding up in the spirit. One day, he was sent to go and feed his brothers. 
the same way you were sent to come for this program you did not know you may just be one day left to your manifestation one day left to your kairos moment and the young teenager stands and he's watching the armies of israel with all their dexterity and experience a beast is barking and all of them are in fear and joseph said no no this is not israel he said please can you give me a chance to take on this man they said young boy get out of here and eventually he went to saul and Saul said, whose son are you? That's what I want to know. I want to know the covenant that backs you, that gives you the audacity to stand before him. And he began to tell him a story. Once upon a time, I was in the bush and a lion came. I toyed. A bear came. I toyed. Saul said, all right, if you choose, we'll give you. But take my armory. And when he tried it, he said, no, I was not trained with this. Leave me with my sling. What he trained me with in the wilderness is what I will use when I stand before Pharaoh. Are we together now? Yes. When he stood before Goliath, I meant to say, he stood before Goliath. Goliath was angry. He felt insulted. He said, am I a dog? I will kill this boy, but is this your best Israel? And David stood with confidence. Something always happens to you when you maximize the seasons of training. Mastery erodes fear. You can stand with confidence. Confidence that until your manifestation, only you can understand. And he stood before him. Is someone getting blessed? And he said, listen, Goliath, I will not only kill you. Let me tell you how you will die. I will use my sling on you. When you fall, I will use your own sword and take off your head and give it to the birds. You come against me with your bows and your spheres, but I come against you in a name. Goliath died before he died. He died from the confidence of David. With one sling. Do you know, I've studied that scripture. David comes from the Benjamites. They said they were masters at flinging these slings. They could diverge arrows. That you shoot an arrow and they will use a sling to diverge it. So don't just think he was anointing. Mastery, mastery. I will not waste this opportunity. And with one sling, he got Goliath down and they began to sing. Women caused him trouble. Saul killed 1,000. David killed 10,000. And David said, I will kill this boy. I don't know where this boy is coming from. Let me prophesy over someone tonight. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. I don't know what seasons you have aborted through carelessness and lack of discernment. But I call upon the God of mercy tonight. May he restore these Kairos moments for you. May he restore these Kairos moments for you. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Hmm. Let me give you two principles. You want to maximize... Kairos moments. I will just give you two principles and then we'll pray. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. Number one, the first key to maximizing prophetic seasons is to understand and to discern the times. You will need discernment. Discernment is the spiritual faculty of perception. You, you must walk with God to know. Listen, there are many things that happen to you when seasons are changing. Can I give you four of them? Maybe just quickly for your knowledge. Listen to me. Every time you come to the end of a season and another season is opening, these four things happen to you. Number one, an unusual desire to pray. It is a strategy that God puts within your spirit so that you will translate those seasons accurately. Number one, an unusual desire to pray. Number two, an unusual desire to give, to give sacrificially. You will never translate prophetic seasons without God making a strong demand upon your life. Abraham, take now thy son. A season is about to open thine only son whom thou lovest. An unusual desire to pray. An unusual desire to give. Are you ready? When seasons are about to change in your life, there are unusual demonic attacks. 
because the realm of the spirit they may not understand but they see unusual angelic activities what is going on around the life of this man and demons are wise enough to know that every time you see angels around a man around a business around a church is a signification that a season is about to end when satan saw unusual angels around jesus while he was praying and fasting satan came and waited at the wilderness patiently the bible says that angels came and ministered to him an unusual desire to pray an unusual desire to give an unusual attack and then number four can i tell you what the fourth key is when a season is about to change you will not have the passion to be around people again there will be an unusual drawing. God will now begin to draw you to intense seasons of consecration. You will find out that sometimes even around your husband or your wife, you don't even want to be around anybody because there are things only it is, it is between you and God. He wants to open up to you a new blueprint. I'm saying this because with these indicators, someone is now seeing that I am actually ending a season in my life. And starting another one so this desire to pray I am always prayerful but what is this desire to pray and then this unusual desire to give and then this demonic attack it looks like everybody around me is now fighting me don't fight them back you are wasting your time these are these are demonic orchestrations to distract your focus have you noticed that there are times when you spend time in the presence of God as you come out everything is offending you everybody is offending you it's a strategy to distract you remember we wrestle not against flesh and blood mm -mm. is someone learning you must learn to discern times the Bible says he made the lights the stars to signify times and seasons that means there are lights that signify times I wish I had the time I would have told you stories upon stories in my own life when I knew that certain seasons were coming to an end woe betides a man who cannot discern and a new season just comes to pass you and you do not even know like Jacob <clears throat> we look to Yahweh Yahweh, our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, one of the keys to training your discernment is to commit to the ministry of prayer and the word listen believers don't waste tonight I know we will praise I know we will sing but it is important for you to know the Bible says there is as it were many voices and none of them is without signification do you know for someone one of the music ministers will come up here and they will raise a song that everybody will be dancing with but to you it is a sign that song will be that this is the sign by this sign is telling you that a new season is opening up most believers in church are not discerning we just come and jump around and go back and season and the realm of the spirit is trying to notify you woman of god the mantle is about to start speaking do you not know that grace to pray shut down on everything and go back for two or three days of fasting and prayer lord what are you saying then the blueprint for the ministry comes what are you saying proverbs 18 and verse 1 says through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom all wisdom all wisdom all wisdom one instruction will come I have anointed you this day sing my praises to the nations ah, that's it you can come out and say oh, so this is it that means the grace is upon my life man of God don't assume it is time for you to start ministry don't assume it is time for you to start preaching can I tell you 
When God wants to lift you next week, Satan will bring you a proposal now. Not every open door is of God. Even the prison has a door. So when a door is open, verify where you are entering. You can, a door can be open and you will enter thinking it's breakthrough. Only to find out you shot yourself in a prison. Can I tell you, the unbecoming of believers in these end times will be assumption and presumption. Never assume there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Lord, should I pursue, especially when great doors begin to open, don't be in a hurry. My father, you are the one who lifts me. Speak to me. If I do not hear your voice, I'm not taking a step. Some trust in horses and chariots, but we trust in the name of our God. I have potentials to open five and ten branches, you may be saying, in worry as a pastor. But Lord, is it your will? Don't say everybody is doing it. No. no. Listen, I am praying that by this meeting tonight, that God will plant upon someone the grace. There is something called inquiry prayer. Inquiry prayer is not give me tea, give me bread. We are talking about prayers that connect to Kairos moments. Should I pursue? And if his voice does not come, you stay there. Shama katosa biata. Sometimes, listen, let me challenge you, especially, I know that there are lots of worship ministers here. Let me speak to you by the Spirit. Every time you are alone with God, listen very carefully because in his voice will come melodies that one song that comes from the secret place, one song can announce you and give you global visibility beyond your imagination. There are songs that do not die because they did not come from the earth realm. There are songs that as soon as you are hearing it, as the person is going back to his seat, the song is dying as you are clapping. Because it was just human manipulation, but there are songs that are deep in the spirit. Man of God, could tonight be the moment where God wants you to encounter grace? You want to arise? It will not happen because you have stayed long. <clears throat> You have been wasting your chronos. For some of you, you are one week left to step into your Kairos moment. Imagine a student who has not been reading and now has one week to write the final exams. It's going to take the grace of God. That's why the Bible says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy. 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 The Lord was in this place. And I knew not. Tonight you will hear the trumpet. You will hear the saxophone. You will hear singing. You will hear worship. I pray that it will not just be a special number. Or celebrities ministering. That in the midst of the sounds. You will hear your own sound. Hmm. The sound that is connected to the anointing upon your life. The sound that will open you up to new dimensions. The sound that will birth something within your spirit. Businessman, did you know that you can stay with God and you just hear one, one instruction from God and you go and do exactly what he's asked you to do and you will create transgenerational wealth that will outlive you to the third and the fourth generation. Hallelujah. Yes. Apostle, my own is anointing. When will it come? God will never call you without empowering you. But the key is to continue to learn and build. Because the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel. If the vessel is small, it will make the oil look small. So while you are waiting for the oil, go and borrow vessels. Don't borrow oil, but borrow vessels. Enlarge your capacity. It says, borrow not a few. Man of God, you want to be a prophet to the nations with the trial and error that you have now? God cannot trust destinies to your hands like that. Can you speak the purposes of God to nations with audacity and power? Go and stay with him. Let him walk upon you. Let him purge you. Let him build you. Let him anoint you. Listen, there is no power in existence. Not when you understand the interplay of Kronos and Kairos. We're going to find a place to pray. 
Hallelujah. I thank God today for certain seasons I was able to maximize in my life. Seasons that came by instruction. Certain seasons, certain fastings, certain prayers, certain books, certain men. Things that may not make sense. Some of you, God can give you an instruction in the night. I'm talking of discernment. Just walk around your living room, praying in the spirit. I will come to you. It may not make sense. You just obey. That's why the Bible says that the kingdom is for people who are childlike. Shabbat and you are going around one hour, two hours. Lord, what are you saying? I'm just walking around my parlor. And then the Spirit of God comes to you. And he says, now get a Bible and a paper. Start writing. Man of God, every time you stand before the people, kneel before me and I will honor that meeting. That becomes your strategy. Somebody would do it and it will not work because it was not a covenant. So you see certain people do certain things. And you see it work wonders. And you try to copy because it did not come by revelation. And absolutely nothing works for you. I dread taking any step that was not sponsored by the voice of God. I have seen the value of discernment. For some of you, you have rushed seasons that God has no business in. You need to retrace your step tonight to say, Lord, I want to start afresh. I was angry because all my colleagues were in ministry and I felt I don't want anybody to disrespect me. So I started a small prayer group. And you see how you are suffering as if God is not alive? Because that you cannot secure a divine backing over something that was carnal and mundane. Discernment. Let me give you the second and we'll pray. Is God speaking to someone tonight? The second thing you need to do is to obtain grace to take prompt action. Prompt action. We maximize seasons when we take prompt action. Listen, when God has not spoken, when you do not understand the direction, you wait. But when his voice comes and he gives you the green light, procrastination may mean the difference between you and the next season. I taught you, John chapter 5, the pool of Bethesda. Can you imagine? That man was lying down close to the pool. One year became five years. Five years became ten years. Ten years became fifteen. I'm sure someone will come to visit that pool and say, my friend, you are still here? He says, yes. Remember, I came after you. And now I've left and you are still here. Next year, I will try it. Do you know if Jesus did not help that man, he would have died there. Being around a miracle does not bring a miracle. It means you are closer to a miracle. It is your action of obedience. Action of obedience. When God says give, give immediately. Can I tell you, in this kingdom you strike when the iron is hot. Because when you come back to the realm of the flesh, the instruction God gave that made sense as that when you were with him in the secret place will no longer make sense again. So it is wise to take steps quickly before the devil comes to cheat you. Hallelujah. Action. Many people have missed on their days of visitation because they do not know what action to take. Oh, for instance, give Jesus a shout of praise and you've been struggling with something, some growth is there and that was the prophetic instruction. You just felt these musicians like shouting, Jare, I'm tired of all this nonsense, I've been shouting. <coughs> that shout would have been the shout that brings out that tumor forever because it looked to you like an ordinary shout except that there was a covenant that was backing that statement. Whatever he tells you to do, Mary said, do it. And guess the instruction. Fill six pots with water and then fetch without verifying whether it has become wine. You are not allowed to taste it. Start going to the rulers. How many of you can take that kind of risk? The rulers are waiting. And then you are saying, sir, wine is coming. And then you fetch water. And literally, they could jail you and kill you. 
but that is the power of obedience the signs don't go before the signs follow you must take steps of faith this sign shall follow this sign shall follow it didn't say this sign shall go with it is the Lord that goes with the signs follow as proof that you have taken steps of faith hallelujah I remember one time two testimonies and we pray I was praying in the spirit preparing and then the Lord brought me this scripture Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord your God will set thee on high above how many nations all the nations of the earth he says and this blessing shall come upon thee and shall overtake thee these were the words that God brought to me and from that situation, that lowly estate, would I believe this? I said, Lord, I believe you. It may not make sense, but if this is your prophetic destiny for me, then I believe. And whatever step it will take, and whatever price I will pay, in partnership with your grace, and in partnership with prophetic timings, I obtain that grace. Can I tell you the truth? When God speaks to you, Ba, believe that he's not playing with you. I hope you know if God said it, it does not guarantee that it will happen. It depends on your believing. It depends on your participating through obedience. They heard the word just like we did. It says the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So the sons of Issachar, that they had an understanding of the times, then to know what Israel ought to do. And the Bible says their brethren were at their command. One time the Lord spoke to me and said that you will not only raise people who are spiritual, you will raise kings and people of influence. And he gave me the scripture, Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. This was the scripture he gave me. Please give it to us. Genesis 17 verse 6. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings will come out of you. You will not draw kings to come, they will come out of you. I believed him I believed him what has he told you have you discerned seasons in your life did you know that your chronos is a gift by God from God to prepare for those kairos moments apostle has been 10 years without a child I know I understand but what are you doing do you not know that every time there was delay in childbirth in the Bible the child that came always became a covenant child and a prophet so while you are waiting are you preparing for Samuel are you preparing to to raise John the Baptist was Samuel an ordinary child was John the prophet an ordinary child so your 10 years delay rather than just crying in lamentation alone you go to the word and say what happened to all the women who had delays that the children who came were prophetic children so lord whilst i am waiting i begin to build myself in the similitude of elizabeth i build myself in the similitude of hannah to hand over samuel back to you because samuel becomes that prophet who will ordain the kings in israel Listen, let me speak to someone. Stop crying about the days you anticipate to come. Start preparing for them because they will come. Unfortunately, they will not come in a way that you will see easily. Jesus said, you use the weather, paraphrasing, to know that after four months, then come the harvest. That means the harvest never takes you by surprise. I have put times and seasons for you to know. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. When I found this key, I vowed that I will never miss out on prophetic seasons in my life. The key is not to look for them. The key is to prepare while I trust the Lord God of heaven to connect me. So I prepare in prayer. I prepare in fasting. I prepare in building. I prepare in learning. That the things that I do not know, because the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 2, it says, and if any man think that he knoweth anything, it says, let him know that he does not know as he ought to know. 
He knows nothing yet as he ought to know. So Joshua Selman, there are many things you do not yet know. And you humble yourself to learn. Because the Bible says to receive with meekness the engrafted word. You don't receive with pride. You don't receive with a sense of a, a, an arrival mentality. Are we together? You are here tonight. Many of you have labored. Some of you are standing. I saw so many people outside. And to others, it may not make sense. What is so special about this meeting that you are outside in the cold, you are outside in the rain? Anybody who laughs at you, remind them that you are using your chronos to prepare for Kairos. Why do you serve in church like a fool? They are not paying you. They are using you. You tell them, no, no, no. It's a track record. It always starts with serving tables, but I will end up a mighty man. Is someone learning? How come you are serving God? Nobody has told you thank you. Some of you have heard my story. Many years ago, I used to carry my own keyboard, pastor, and trek from my house to go and play a keyboard for one man who, you know, he, he was using a hotel. He just started ministry. From church, I would return and go back, carry my own small keyboard and take there and I would play that keyboard. Nobody ever told me thank you. The only thing I got one day was one cassette and one Fanta. When he was launching his cassette, then it, there was nothing like CD, his cassette. One cassette was given to me as a gift and then they were sharing drinks and they gave me minerals. Who would have known? That that little boy playing keyboard would be sent to the nations. Who would have known that that usher here at this church, who is always sweeping this church. Can I tell you, every door God opens for you is not the real door he wants to open. That is so a test to see what you do. Uh, if God makes you an usher, it is truly not an usher that you will remain. There is a transition in the spirit. The Bible says, moreover, it is required in men. I do not know anyone God is using across the nation today who cannot tell you a track record of painful seasons where their work and their labor did not make sense. Do not think, the Bible says, though the vision tarries, the hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait. When these seasons, do you know, the connection from Kronos to Kairos, I'm wrapping up now. Man of God, wait. I know you are feeling cheated. That anointing you have is boiling. You have Greek and Hebrew you want to preach. Don't worry. When the seasons open, you will preach and be tired and not know what part of the Bible to read again. You just be patient. Keep preparing the sermons. There are enough sinners to exhaust your sermon. Be patient. Hurrying seasons unnecessary will only waste your time. He says, eat for the journey is far. He ate a little and he lay down. The angel tapped him. I know where you are going. Keep eating. Prophet, eat. Man of God, eat. A day will come you will need to have stamina. I just returned from a trip as I'm standing jumping like this. Because you see, through experience and by the election of grace, he has trained us to know how to draw the strength of the spirit. Even when your physical strength is, you cannot fake some things. You will just die. Let me tell you, there are people, this one thing announcement, in two weeks of travel, you will return back and a doctor will have to say, just leave ministry. Because you have not trained your spirit man. It says, though our outer, our outer man perish, but that the inner man is renewed. Have you learned how to tap supernatural strength? Lord, I must do the ministry. Now God opens it and you have ministrations back to back. And then you break down. You become a reproach to God because of lack of preparedness. Someone, this is a prophetic word for you. The call of God upon your life is not a lie, but allow seasons to bring you wait and while waiting serve and while serving pray and while praying fast and while fasting study mm, yes sir the kind of mantle that is coming upon you is a very delicate mantle watch those who carry the mantle study their mistakes and learn don't just smile and be debating if you are Elijah, Jezebel is coming after you. So just be, be, while you are shouting, give me Elijah's, you better know what to do with Jezebel. Because Jezebel does not follow men, she follows Elijah's. So when that mantle comes upon you, I know I am a Samson to my generation. Tell me what you are going to do with Delilah. 
there are spirits that don't follow men they follow mantles I am a kingdom financier is that true have you studied about the king of Tyre the one who sits upon that mountain he took Jesus and said bow to me and I will give you the whole world and the glory what shall it profit a man he says so when God is training you to be that financial apostle just when you buy the car and you make the first 10 million God will say give the car and the 10 million you will bind and cast his voice thinking he was a demon and he says it's not about the car i'm revealing to you that the loss that still resides within you cannot make you my treasurer my last treasurer disappointed me i'm looking for who i can train and still trust with the resources of the kingdom there are many believers claiming things in church and not knowing that every day that passes is a gift to prepare for your destiny david stay and kill the lions no applause but stay stay and kill the bear david stay until you become king joseph stay until you become prime minister esther forget that you are a village girl your destiny is in the palace so prepare yourself mary you are going to be carrying jesus so be careful if something happens to your life you will not be able to carry jesus who is God speaking to? Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter. We're about to pray. I came tonight for the sake of a great man of God who has a prophetic destiny even here in Worry. The Lord put this meeting because of the next sets of prophetic worshippers that may be here, scattered in the crowd. You remind me of myself. Years ago, I was in a Reinhard Bonke crusade. I was already a man of God. But I went and like the crowd that I saw outside, I was somewhere locked in the crowd as I watched that great man. You are seated, but I was standing. I stood for six hours. Reinhard Bonke preached because there were certain graces I was truly looking for. And you see, every time you do not have the oil, you go to them that sell and buy. There are always them that sell. You buy with hunger. You buy with humility. You buy with meekness. These are the currencies that purchase spiritual things. I stood on that ground and he preached a very simple sermon you may have heard me say respectfully speaking annoyingly simple a story that you know very basic and elementary and when he was done he was going to take a cup of water to minister the baptism and I did not know that standing on that crusade ground was my Kairos moment the first day came and passed wonderful miracles by the second day i prayed and fasted i said lord i honor you and i honor this man you have raised an ordinary man and given africa to his hands there must have been a grace it's not by his oratory it's not just by some charisma very simple man but mightily grace what did you put upon his life i was wheeling people from wheelchairs you know they were there was a section they were pushing those who were sick and I pleaded I said can I join they said no I was not you know I'm not in the committee I said committee or not I must walk I came here I traveled and I came to receive something desperation I knew that it was a season as I was pushing those people I remember what I was saying I said Lord this is how it will be in my meetings too in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ yes and I watched tremendous miracles. But that was not the high point. Ladies and gentlemen, like those who are inside and outside, I was watching. And all of a sudden, I was taken over by a vision. A large, giant bird. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit that I was seeing visibly was not flying, 
was soaring over that crusade ground white in its brilliance tied something around the wings silvery it was just moving and the spirit of god took me to genesis 1 and verse 2 and the spirit hovered round the face of the waters for me it's not just a scripture i read it came as a revelation and he told me the union of the move of the spirit and the spoken word is what births the miraculous. Do you know when I came back to myself, I had backed the stage. I didn't even know when I had turned. That was a Kairos moment. Imagine if I said, after all, he's a preacher, I'm a preacher. The pride of many. He's a singer, I'm a singer. He's my younger brother. He's my elder brother. Listen, be delivered tonight. If you have that mindset, I cast that spirit out of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus came to a place where they knew him. This is the reason why when God wants to raise mighty men, he takes them away from those who know them. Because those who know you will never allow men celebrate the unique gift of God within you. So God will take you out of their presence until you now return in power and glory then he will reintroduce you to them <clears throat> hallelujah tonight let me tell you sincerely worry and champions cathedral you are truly truly a blessed and a fortunate people to have the caliber of people and voices that God has allowed to be ministering to you you see when you see people look beyond the gift look at the every altar that stands here there is blood dripping on that altar a testament of sacrifice you don't get carried away by some of these you know glitz and glamour and think that people are just entertainers no there are people you do not know the pain and the sacrifices there are people because of their work with god god left them with a token of promise that every time they stand to sing or to minister there must be a deposit of something from heaven my question is can tonight be your kairos moment can it be the moment that you say, I've been attending seven days of glory for many years, but now I came with a determination that as I hear the sound of worship, as I hear the word, my heart is open to receive. If that is you, then I congratulate you in advance because years from now, weeks from now, months from now, you will be celebrating this day and someday you will stand before people and while you are explaining to them the mystery behind the hand of God upon your life you will recall these moments and tell them I learned about the opportune time and for those who have aborted certain prophetic seasons God is a God of mercy can I tell you today and tomorrow are gifts from God to remedy yesterday you see that is the reason why time is tripartite you can't do anything about yesterday but you can do something with today that will correct and reflect your correction in tomorrow. Every time you wake up in the morning, see your waking up as an expression of God's mercy that there is hope for you. Forget about yesterday. Remember ye not the former things the Bible says, nor consider, it says for behold, see. The word behold means see. Conceive as a reality in your spirit. I do a new thing. We have to pray whilst we stand to pray is it all right if immediately i make the altar call now i think we should strike while the iron is hot am i right on that in fact be seated let me make the altar call first please let me two or three minutes there are people here listen to me there's no point cajoling there's no point playing games we're not playing some church jamboree the business of jesus has to do with your life and your heart remember jesus says if thou he says for god so loved the world he was speaking to nicodemus that he gave his only begotten son he says that whosoever believeth on him should not perish it's a law but that he should have life everlasting Verse 18 says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might through Him be saved. I'm speaking to someone within this auditorium. I'm speaking to someone across all the overflows. And you are saying, Apostle, listening to you, I know by the Spirit that God is calling me to begin a very deep and a profitable relationship beyond church, beyond religion, 
beyond having a form of godliness he calls you into a deeper experience now i don't know how many of you will be allowed to come and stand here but here's what i'm going to request the first groups of people who will stand here after i make the call once the front is exhausted then i would request that you just move to your led and just stand there and i'll request maybe a counselor or two to just attend to them but i want to make the altar call and listen you have a right to not pay attention to what i'm saying god gave us that power you have a right to say apostle i've listening i've listened to you uh, but i'm not interested in this your decision that's fine but i'm concerned about someone who is seated knowing that there are destinies connected to you i'm concerned about somebody who is seated and he's saying apostle give me an opportunity now don't kneel stand for space i will count one to five run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here if you mean business with jesus one let's celebrate them as they come make sure you understand what you are doing come to jesus you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one come come some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears everyone is given the gift of time listen to me ladies and gentlemen destiny is a function of time everything you give your time to you are giving a part of your life to jesus calls he beckons on you tonight no matter where you are and that includes those who are following by way of television jesus is calling Pastor Nat will say, someone is knocking at your door. How true. Jesus said, behold, I stand and I knock at the door of your heart. That if any man will hear my voice and open that door, I will come in and I will sup with him. And he will sup with you. He can give you a new beginning today. Today can be the beginning of a new day. Come to Jesus. I'll still give you a minute or two very quickly. My friend you are standing for an altar call and you are recording me be serious drop that phone and concentrate on what we're saying you see this is what some of these people do you are standing on and don't feel embarrassed you settle down and receive jesus christ into your heart huh? come come to jesus Whoever told you he does not change men. Read your Bible and watch Saul turn to Paul. Jesus. The Bible says that no other name under heaven is given unto men by which we must be saved. That name. That name. Come. I'm about to pray for you now. For those who are not able to make it in, please, may I request that you stand in front of your LEDs. And please let me plead with counselors or any of the pastors, if there would be at least one pastor. Okay, there are pastors everywhere already. God bless you. Now, for those of you who are in front, I salute you. Thank you for your courage. Some of you are crying. You are doing that which you are doing. It's unto Jesus. Jesus makes men. Jesus builds men. Lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. Thank you. Thank you for not being ashamed. Thank you for not being ashamed. He gives you a new beginning. I plead the blood. 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 The precious blood. I plead the blood. The blood eternal saving blood ah. i don't have to cry that is the integrity of the gospel for he has paid the price 
I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, the precious blood. I plead the blood, the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry. Hallelujah. For Jesus paid the price. All of you lifting your hands, please shout this loud and clear unto Jesus. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I declare that I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones inside here, the many outside and those who are following online, even those who will be following by way of rebroadcast. Thank you for leading these many to yourself. The Bible says, as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call you recipients of the life of God. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ. From tonight until forever, you go from glory to glory in Jesus' mighty name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Now, very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, there's someone waving the counselor placard. May I please request that you just follow this one instruction as we clap for you just follow them they will have a word with you just for a minute or two and then you will rush back can we give them a big god bless you please go ahead give them a big god bless you is somebody giving them a big god bless you Oh, 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 You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. I'm saying that because I'm about to speak over your life finally. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 please celebrate my friend and brother, Pastor Nat. Thank you. Please stand on your feet. I'm about to speak over your life. Hallelujah. Now, I truly, I'm not sure it's his time yet, but I mean, this is, this is the beauty of brotherhood and love. Thank you, sir. Let me even give you a big. Now, since he has come, he's going to blow the trumpet for me. Will that be fine? There's just something about prophesying under that unction. So he will blow that trumpet and I will speak over your life. Do you know what that means? The blowing of this trumpet and the prophecy means everything buried for as long as it has been buried. Listen. Oh yeah, BJ Sachs. Come, 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 come. Let me give you a big hug, by the way. Hallelujah. So there, there are sounds that are going to rise. Can we do this prophetically for two or three minutes? Now be very sensitive. Listen, 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 listen. Listen. As the sound goes up, 
yours is to open up your heart that everything that is dead everything that is buried and every season that i've wasted by the mercy of god resurrection is about to happen does someone believe that hallelujah yes sir Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. Shabalakosabadusiata. Rada barato secret de 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 Rada baro sherete seke parusiata. Hallelujah. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Champions Cathedral, worry, we stand united here on this stage and we decree and declare, we call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one who can help men arise. I prophesy over your life, standing upon the graces here, every season that you have aborted, may my God restore, may my God restore. May my God restore. May my God restore in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, I decree and declare everything the devil stole that is taken from your life in the name of Jesus, even by the sound of the trumpet, we declare a sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Every mantle, every grace, every unction that must rest upon your life in this season, in the name of Jesus, let it come upon you now. As a man of God, as a businessman, as a parent, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, the Bible says, Why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Anyone who has dug a pit for you, we stand by the God of heaven. Like Haman, they will fall into the pits that they dug. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. Champions Cathedral, arise, shine. Worry, arise, shine. In the name of Jesus, for the set time for your rising has come. No more going down. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, as Pastor Nat blows the trumpet as God puts in his spirit, I want there to be a sound of rejoicing all over this place in the name of Jesus yes sir Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you so very much. Um, I'm truly honored to be here. Please help me appreciate the great man of God, Pastor Godman and his dear wife. Give them a big God bless you. Thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you for this honor. May the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. And I extend my salutations and gratitude to the entire leadership. Thank you for this opportunity. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' matchless name, shall we lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord to speak to us? You are the one that we praise. 
Spirit of the living God, we submit ourselves to your wisdom tonight and we pray that our lives be transformed, that indeed will be elevated. We submit ourselves to your wisdom and we ask that you will help us and let Jesus be glorified. For in Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's my pleasure to um, bring God's word. I believe in the power of the word. God's method, I would always say, is his word. His method to lift is by his word. His method to bless is by his word. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 3, speaking about the word, it says, And without him was not anything made that was made. That means outside of the word, nothing can be made. Not a life, not a destiny. Without him was not anything made that was made. Hallelujah. So we'll discuss a few things along the team tonight and I'm praying that God will open our hearts and grant us understanding in Jesus' name. Let's begin our discussion from the book of Ephesians 1 and verse 3. I'll read two scriptures and then we'll trust to be transformed by that which the Lord will reveal to us. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus and he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us, take note, who hath blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus and he's bringing a very profound information to guide their understanding. He's saying that our Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ had blessed us. He's speaking to believers. Blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He's saying this is the heritage of every believer that this spiritual blessing is the heritage of every believer and it is routed through the office of the Christ. Are we together? So he's given a very profound information that a lot depends, the, your excelling in life depends on this kind of orientation that every spiritual blessing has been given to the believer in Christ. Scripture number two, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. If we're together, please say amen. 2 yeah. Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Paul began to talk on sowing and reaping, giving and receiving, but then he makes a very profound statement in verse 9. Here's what he says. And God is able to make all grace. Say all grace. All grace. He's talking about all the dimensions of grace immediately. You can see from this scripture that grace is multifaceted, multidimensional. So he says, God, it is within his ability to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. He says, all grace produces all sufficiency all grace god is able you know what it means to be sufficient to be sufficient means to be capable lacking nothing always rising to the occasion 
that God is able to make all grace abound towards you, the believer, so that you having all sufficiency, that you will abound in every good work. If that is you, shout a loud amen. amen. So I wrote down here, and I want to use this as a foundation, that the believer's experience, please look up, the believer's experience as designed by God was supposed to be your faith adventure is supposed to culminate to a life of excellence and glory. Now, you have to find a way of accepting this as a reality that every believer in Christ, regardless your background, regardless what it had been before your encounter with Christ, that once you are in Christ and you have encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a heritage and a destiny of excellence and glory. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Now, it matters that your life reveals the excellency and the glory of God. There are many scriptures in the Bible that reveals and attest to the fact that the believer's rising brings glory to God. Are we together? In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus was teaching what we call the Beatitudes. And verse 13, he begins by saying, ye are the salt of the earth. He says, now if the salt has lost its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? That it is good for nothing except to be trampled other foot by men, of men. Then he says, you are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Then it says, neither, that means it's an anomaly, it shouldn't happen. Neither should do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to everyone there. Are we together? Verse 16 now says, let your light, the word let means permit, let your light so shine, not just before spirits, not just before angels, before men, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So there is a mandate upon every believer that in when the glory and the excellency of the kingdom is revealed in and through your life, Jesus is glorified. In John 15 and verse 8, the Bible says, John 15 and verse 8, it says, Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. When you go to verse 16 of the same chapter, it says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Are we together? Are we still together? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, Paul was speaking to the church in Ephesus and he says we are his workmanship. His workmanship, the tools that an artist uses to display his creativity. We are his workmanship, he says, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. He's not wondering what to make out of our lives. He's saying we have been predestined unto a life of glory and grace. I'm showing you from scripture that every one of us, whether you walk in that reality or not, is not the issue. That in the mind of God, this is his blueprint for every believer. A life of excellence and a life of glory. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul said to the intent that now unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the multifaceted manifold wisdom of God. That means the end of my Christian experience and your Christian experience should be a testament that brings glory to the name of the Lord. The dexterity and excellence that comes from your life. Your life should be a wonder and a marvel to all and sundry. And this has nothing to do with being a preacher. Are we together now? Yes. Is it not in your Bible that the path of the just is as a shining light? That it shines more and more. More and more is the destiny of every believer. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Galatians chapter 1 and verse 24, Paul was speaking and he made a very profound statement and they glorified God in me. They glorified God in me. In fact, the Bible says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, he says, we, 
we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. So settle it once and for all that you have been ordained by reason of your coming into Christ. You have been born into a life of excellence, a life of glory. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. This is very important. You would think that this is so basic and simple, but until you agree with God on this wise, you may never see the glory of God find expression in your life. The Bible calls us living epistles. That means this Bible is not the only Bible that we have. You are literally a living epistle. That when someone closes his Bible, you cause that Bible to still be open through your life. He can continue his Bible study by studying your life. That whatever he did not understand in the room, God will refer him to your life as an explanation to what he was learning. Living epistles. Are we still together? So God has ordained every believer in Christ to a life of excellence and a life of grace. The second thing that I want you to know is that the manifestation of that glory depends on our accessing and engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, please listen carefully. Having established the fact that you and I have been ordained by God to a life of grace, a life of excellence, beauty, and color, walking in the manifestation of that truth does not just depend on God's desire and his intent. It depends on our, number one, accessing and then number two, engaging the mysteries of the kingdom. That means the possibility exists that in the entire lifetime of a believer, even though in Christ, that you may never truly live out the fullness of your God-given potential. And it will not be an issue of his love or his desire. It will be the absence of your comprehending the ways of God or failing to engage accordingly. It says there remained a rest for the people of God. Even though they are the people of God, there is still a Sabbath that they are yet to enter. It says today, if you hear his voice, he says to harden not your heart as they did in the wilderness. Are we together? This is very, very important. That in as much as prophetically speaking, God has ordained a life of grace and excellence and glory, it is your, the, you see, the manifestation of this Zoe life that we have received is knowledge dependent. In ignorance, you cannot manifest the potential of this divine life. Ephesians 4 and verse 18, having their understanding darkened, it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. Psalm 82 from verse 5, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. So it takes knowledge to bring you to a point of stature and strength. Because the Bible says, Galatians 4, for an heir, even though he's an heir, for as long as he's a child, he differeth not from a slave, even though he be Lord of all. Are we together? Very important. So Paul says in Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, he says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, he says, which is able to build you up. Huh? and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So just believing that I am rising to a level of grace and influence and power, that is wonderful, but it may rob you if you do not understand that the manifestation of the glory in the life of the believer is predicated upon your accessing and engaging take note two expressions accessing by light and then engaging this conference seeks to create a platform for us to rise and to fly higher in life and it is in your destiny the bible says in daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 it says that they that be wise shall be like the firmament of the heavens and they that turn many to righteousness even as the stars forevermore so there is no doubt as to the fact that we have been ordained 
to a life of grace. But Galatians 2 and verse 2 says, I went up by revelation, not by desire. I went up. Galatians 2 and 2. I went up by revelation. It takes more than desire. It takes more than a sincere heart to become a pace setter, a trailblazer. The difference between any two believers is not the love of God. The difference between the Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. Every believer defines his possibilities to the degree to which you labor in the spirit to access and to engage the mysteries of the kingdom. Matthew 13 and verse 11. Jesus is still teaching and he tells them it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Access to light. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come and the glory of the Lord. You see that glory is related to light. When there is no light, there cannot be glory. Is that true? Yes. You are able to see the beauty that is in our world today because it is a combination of your eyes and light. You don't just see because you have an eye. Of the light in this room, your eye is still healthy. You will still not see. So it's the union of your eyes and light that produces beauty and color. Are we together now? So it says, arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The next verse says, for darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but upon you his glory will arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles shall come. I like this. You will not look for them. Gentiles shall come to thy light. And then he says, they are kings to the brightness of your rising. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. John the disciple, John the Baptist, the prophet, in John chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible says there was a man sent from God. Are we still together? It says his name was John. Verse 7 says the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that men through that witness might be saved. So settle it once and for all that in as much as God has designed a life of glory and grace, a life that reveals the multifaceted possibilities that are in Christ, it is predicated upon our accessing the truth. It says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. If someone is learning, shout aloud, Amen. amen. It then means... That any two believers, please listen, if your life is bankrupt of beauty and color, if your life is bankrupt of glory, if your life is not a perpetual, ever-increasing manifestation of the glory of God, you have to go back and investigate um, whether or not you are a student of the mysteries of the kingdom. And I'll explain that in a moment. The mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. That when you find the mysteries of the kingdom and you obtain grace to engage them, the Bible leaves you with an assurance that it is impossible for your life to be without beauty and to be without color. Even for Jesus, the son of the living God, in as much as he was the word incarnate, when he walked upon the earth from age 12, he submitted himself to learning. The Bible says in Luke 2 and verse 52, that even Jesus increased in wisdom. Is that true? Yes. In stature and in favor with God and with men. At age 12, he was under the doctor's learning. That it is written he used against Satan. He learned it as a teenager. So when Satan came, he did not say, I think, I imagine, I wonder, an opinion. He said, it is written. It is written. Hallelujah. So God desires for our lives to be a revelation of his excellency. Now, please look up. There is, from a spiritual standpoint, there is no destiny that has an advantage by default. 
from a spiritual standpoint there is no destiny that has any advantage by default your advantage begins when you encounter Christ that means any life no matter how glorious outside of Christ can be frizzled out in a moment the story of Job is a lesson for all men that in one day a man's world can crumble completely are we together yes that insurance and assurance that every believer has your your advantage the systems of advantage in your life begins to count at your encounter with jesus christ but now when you come into the kingdom please listen when you come into the kingdom the structure of the kingdom is such that when you now become a believer you submit to the ministry of the holy spirit you submit to the ministry of the word of god are we together and submitting to the word of god begins to expose you to the ways of god hidden in the ways of god are the mysteries of the kingdom the modus operandi of the kingdom you now begin to learn how things work in the kingdom you now begin to learn how favor happens how restoration happens for instance are we together yes now Two believers differ in their results because one may have been under a teaching priest, just like pastor was sharing, according to Jeremiah 3.15, that I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and that they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Happy is the man who finds a teaching priest that mentors you methodically, line upon line, precept upon precept, helping you to understand the ways of God. Are we together? This is what church is supposed to be. A convergence of believers who come to learn the ways of God. That you should leave every service wiser, gaining mastery, understanding the things of the spirit. Because the Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. You can lay hold of eternal life with intelligence and understanding, not doubting your results. You can know that you have found the keys. Listen, when it has to do with knowing God and loving God and seeking him, our pursuit is infinite. Even in heaven, there is still room to come up either. But when it has to do with excelling in the earth, the truths that you need to win are finite. You can hold them. Did you get what I just said? That the body of knowledge, the truths required for the excelling of the believer are not infinite. They are finite. Like a medical student passes through a school knowing that there is a curriculum you can exhaust. It does not mean that your learning stops, but you can exhaust the curriculum and you are certified as a doctor. This is how it is with the work of faith. You can exhaust the body of truths that have been allocated. The Bible calls it marvelous light. It is a spiritual curriculum that when you pass through methodically, there is a kind of believer you should become. Hmm. Hallelujah. You imagine with me a naive but determined young gentleman or lady determined to be a doctor. Imagine their first day in the university or the medical school. You would look at that person and almost laugh to scorn. But let that person pass through that system methodically after six years or seven years you come into the hospital and there's the same person seated with confidence ready to inject you ready to counsel you add a few more times and then with diligence and that person has become a consultant while you are crying and lamenting it tells you calm down there's no cause for alarm i know what to do they are not doubting they can write a prescription and never have to call you back to verify if it worked there is a level of mastery they would have gotten so this conference is bringing us to a higher level of mastery listen there is no pilot that flies by mistake no you can move a car learning and playing around just because gravity supported you and the car began to move you may not even know what you are doing until you hit a tree but you the the dynamics of flying an airplane it requires a level of mastery amateurism will not work are we together now yes sir there are times where a car can move on its own because the brake failed or the handbrake failed and if you are fortunate to be sitting in front of it, even in ignorance, you will flatter yourself for the few minutes left before an accident, believing that you are driving that car. But can that happen with an aircraft? 
the laws are many it takes intelligence and precision so when you want to fly high in life it is not in the presence of ignorance God is bringing you listen God is bringing you to a place of mastery where you do not fear your results again because you have laid hold on eternal life you can reproduce it again and again it's important for you to understand that God's jealousy and integrity is back of his laws that by these two immutable things it is impossible you are not the first to desire influence. You are not the first to desire prosperity. You are not the first to desire all of these systems of advantage. The Bible says the things that are written aforetime, they are written for our learning so that we through faith and patience, is that true? Might find hope. Apostle, can God bring a miracle of fruitfulness? Study Abraham. That's why his story was left there. Is it true that God can raise a weak person to become mighty? Study Gideon. Study Joseph. Study the village girl called Hadassah, Esther. So that when God is saying, I'm lifting you, there is a reference that your faith can latch upon something. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly... I want to take one of these systems of advantage as a case study tonight and please in the name of Jesus for the next 10 20 minutes I request that you lend me your attention because what you are about to learn by the integrity of scripture I want to assure you that if you understand what I'm about to show you you will wave your today goodbye and it will wave you back once and for all you will be ready to open, be open to a life, a destiny of grace. You will marvel and wonder at who you have become. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Dominion over time. I want to talk very briefly on dominion over time. Let's discuss the subject of dominion over time. I'm teaching on speed tonight. Dominion over time. Let's look at one scripture very quickly. Genesis chapter 27. Um, the full text is from verse 1 to 20. But then for sake of time, let's just go to verse 20. So a, a quick recap on the story. This was Isaac about to bless his sons. Remember the story? Jacob and Esau. So he sends Esau to the field to get venison and bring prepare for him that which he wanted so that he would bless him. And then Jacob's mother heard this and then she liars with Jacob and you know the story. So, the verse of emphasis is verse 20. If you can see it projected, I would plead that we read as many who can see. Ready? One to read. And Isaac said to his son, uh -huh, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly? Please stop. Stop, 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 stop. Don't rush. Just look at what you are reading. So he sends his son and he knew that under normal circumstances you should not have arrived by now because there is a natural cause. You have to go hunting the skill required and then suddenly he hears that the child is back, the venison is prepared and he says, no, something is wrong. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be this fast. How is it? that thou hast found it even though they were lying the point is not endorsing the lie is drawing out a mystery and a lesson from this situation look at the answer of the boy how is it that thou hast found it so quickly he said because the lord your god has brought it to me this is the reason behind my speed by now i shouldn't have built under normal circumstances no if i'm to follow the natural progression of things i shouldn't have accomplished this this much but that there is a possibility in the dealings of god with men where men can dominate over time they can gain time and achieve mighty things within a short time you believe that how is it that thou has found it how did you find the secret so quickly 
How did you build the house so quickly? How did you lift your loved one so quickly? And you will tell them, Ebenezer, God brought it to me. There, there's something I, I did business with God and in my work with God, I found out that there is a possibility that men can dominate time. Now listen very carefully. Ladies and gentlemen, destiny is measured in time. Destiny is measured as a function of time. The unit of destiny is time. The meaning of that is that whatever takes your time has taken part of your life and part of your destiny. Whatever you commit your life and your time to. Are we together? Yes. You call the entire journey of someone from birth to death life time. What do you call it? Life time. It's a function of time. Under normal circumstances, the Bible teaches, under normal circumstances, that time only goes forward. It never goes backward. Under normal circumstances. Is that true? You cannot reach into yesterday. Yesterday is gone. You are only left with the memories. Isn't it mysterious that no sentiment and no bias can take someone into yesterday? It's gone. It doesn't matter what you do with the time. The time does not depend on your seriousness or laziness. It just moves. Whatever you do within that time does not matter. This is very profound. Is someone learning now? We do not have unlimited time. The Bible is clear as to that fact. We do not have unlimited time. Every man's time on earth is finite. Jesus had this to say. He said in... I must walk the works of him that sent me. Is that in your Bible? While it is day, he said, for the night cometh where no man can walk again. So he's saying, listen, there is a sense of urgency to my life. I have to walk within this frame of time because if I miss out on this opportunity, the night will come where no man can walk again. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15, Apostle Paul encourages us to redeem the time. To redeem the time. He says to walk circumspectly. The word circumspect means accurately. That means you do not have all that time to be guessing and experimenting your life. Your, your life and destiny requires a level of accuracy if you are to gain time. He says redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now please listen. For various reasons, reasons of ignorance, reasons of carelessness, demonic attacks, it is very possible that a man can waste a major part of his lifetime. This is where my teaching goes now. For many, many reasons, ignorance I wrote here, carelessness, demonic factors, many already have time against them. Hence a concept that we call delay what is delay delay means that time has gone ahead of you versus the accomplishments and the achievements that should happen within that time are we together now this is very important but i have good news for you the bible does not leave us in the dark there are two principal systems of advantage that can help the believer to will dominion over time number one is called restoration number two is called speed now i'm not talking on two of them but just for your knowledge that every time you find yourself a victim of time that time is against you the bible says to be comforted by the awareness of these two mysteries that in the dealings of god with men there is a phenomenon called restoration and there is a phenomenon called speed. The union of speed and restoration equals dominion over time. And by this I'm prophesying to someone that in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, it doesn't matter what has failed to happen within the time given. By these twin forces of restoration and dominion, may you gain time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated and let me encourage you to listen carefully. Restoration is powerful. The assignment of restoration is to take the possibilities that were to be in your yesterday and move them into your today. Restoration is different from progress. 
Hallelujah. Progress just means that what was impeding you hitherto has now been taken so you keep moving. But that is not restoration. Restoration means to be taken in the wings of the spirit and to be kept at the location you would have been if there was no constraint. So just because you are moving forward does not mean you are restored. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Is someone learning now? Restoration is powerful. Imagine with me that because you came from a family that was not, um, maybe not a Christian family. Let's say you got born again at 40. Congratulations, but did you know that time has gone? Is that true? It takes a long time to know God. It takes a long time to argue about the things of the Spirit till you finally submit to the Holy Spirit. It takes a long time to begin to build your faith. By the time you are done, you are already hitting 50, 55. All of the achievements that were allocated within your time. So the assignment of restoration is to take that which should happen from 10 to 20 to 30 and make it happen even within one year. Do you believe this? The second which is my concern tonight is speed. What is speed? Very mysterious spiritual concept. Speed. I define speed as the ability accelerated accomplishment within a short period of time. Listen please. Accelerated accomplishment within a short period of time. That means for us to say you have speed in your life, the accomplishment must outweigh the time allocated. Accelerated accomplishment within a short period of time is called speed. For instance, if by the end of this year, you come with your house, your car, and everything that would have taken others 10 years, that is called speed. Are we together now? Yes. A woman who may have been barren for five years and gives birth to triplets. Those triplets are not children. Those, tri those triplets are testaments from heaven that God can give men speed. Is that true? Do you believe that? Speed. Accelerated accomplishments within a short period of time. Ladies and gentlemen, there is truly a grace that can come upon a man and cause you to walk in speed that even within the time that is left much can be done such that your life will never show any dent there will be no lapse that time i'm saying this because i know that there are people here you are looking at your life and saying apostle the truth is that i got to know god late i got to learn the things of the spirit late coming from a family where nobody had risen i had to manage all these wicked forces before even starting my journey i have a word of hope and prophecy for you that in the name of jesus the son of the living god for many of you it will not exceed this year i say it again it will not exceed this year that which you are thinking will happen in 2026 2027 by the mystery of speed by this grace even before the ember month somebody will be celebrating already I hope you believe this yes sir hmm. and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah is that in your Bible and the Bible says Elijah ran on barefoot and he overtook the chariot of the king even down to Israel ah so men can run men can run men can fly you can define your pace in life. Listen, from Abuja to Lagos, under normal circumstances, if you're using a car, it's about 10 to 12 hours minus arm robbers, minus bad road, and all of those kinds of things. Are we together? The same distance by flight is exactly 50 minutes. Am I right on that? And can even be faster depending on what kind of aircraft. Am I right on that? Same destination, but the possibilities are defined because something was done to the aircraft and it is the speed of movement that brings that accomplishment. Listen, in the name of Jesus Christ, someone is changing their vehicle. 
I'm not talking of a physical vehicle where you have been crawling to destiny a grace is coming upon you and by the power that raised Christ from the dead you will experience speed in a way that will surprise you please be seated men can have dominion over time that men look at your life and they see there is absolute rest you are not threatened by time because you hold within your hand the keys that can manipulate time to your advantage the zenith of dominion is not dominion over things it is dominion over time because every other thing can come when there is time that was the prayer of hezekiah a dying man does not ask for more things he will ask for more time am i right on that if i leave the rich fool had things what god took away from him was time and his whole life was ruined let me give you four keys very quickly within the time that we have and then we pray is god helping someone my assignment is to provoke your spirit to look at your life and say this cannot be my destiny i'm i'm tired of giving excuses let me access superior graces and rise in a way and manner that brings glory to the name of the lord number one the first key that controls speed is wisdom matthew chapter 25 from verse 1 to 13 this is the parable of the ten virgins and the bible tells us that the bankruptcy of wisdom can translate to delay am i right on that yes we may not have the whole time let me just um narrate the story so the bible talks about 10 virgins they were all virgins so it was not an issue of sin or righteousness it was wisdom and foolishness are we together now and it was time that revealed who was wise or who was foolish all of them looked wise but time began to separate them if you saw all of them in the morning you would call all of them wise but the delay of the bridegroom started separating them into two categories wise and foolish others took extra oil the bible says and others just ignored it and as time went on the bridegroom delayed you see why delay is dangerous if he came early all of them will be credited to be wise but the delay of the bridegroom began to reveal a deficiency in the virgins and then as time went on their lamp was still intact but the oil had finished and then they heard the sound they woke all of them and said the bridegroom is on his way coming and they begged the other five they said no go to them that sell and buy as they ran to go and buy we came back and they met the door closed so the bible says walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise redeeming the time because the days are evil if you are bankrupt of superior wisdom you cannot have dominion over time hallelujah coming for a conference like this is a manifestation of wisdom because in three days one week you can access light that redefines the next course of 10 20 30 years of your life it is a very profitable bargain help those under the anointing just just help that gentleman there listen are we together now wisdom the bible says wisdom is the principal thing it says in all your getting get wisdom he said "Doth not wisdom cry he began to speak about wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice that with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness the excellency of wisdom show me a man who is limited by any factor but has access to wisdom i show you a man whose dominion is still intact wisdom number two very quickly the second key that controls speed is favor hmm. i can spend all night teaching you about this exodus chapter 12 and verse 36 exodus 12 36 let's read it together if you can see it please exodus 12 help us media exodus 12 36 
Are you ready? Let's read. One to read. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, uh -huh, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. Listen, they are about to leave for the first time in 430 years. And the Bible said, where would they start working to get all the things they would need for the journey? The Bible says in one night, something came upon those people. I hope you know that those who were giving them this same thing were those who refused to give them straw. One moment you are refusing to give a man straw, the next moment you are giving him gold and begging him to live in a hurry. Now, let me show you another scripture that will bless you. Do you love the Bible? Yeah. Esther chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9. Never forget this scripture in your life if you are a Christian. This is Esther now, in the midst of many other virgins, hoping to be selected as queen. I want to show you something in verse 9, but let's read verse 8. The Bible says, and it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decrees was heard, and the maidens were gathered together in Shushan, the palace. It says to the custody of Haggai that Esther was brought also. So she was just one of many of the women. To the custody of Haggai, the keeper of the women. Let's read verse 9, Jesus. And the maiden pleased him. Uh -huh, and she obtained kindness. What was the result? And he speedily gave her. Stop. Stop. What did he do? Hmm. Because favor was upon her, the man speedily gave her. I don't know who has delayed in giving you. There are things you should have handled right now. There are, there are signatures that would have been on that document and by now certain things would have happened. In the name of Jesus, may you be speedily given. Speedily given. Speedily given. I prophesy to you, be speedily given by the Spirit of the living God. Please sit down. That a woman, a village girl, can obtain favor from this man and he speedily gave her. The Bible talks about the cupbearer of a king called Nehemiah. That because that man had favor, the king saw his countenance and said, Nehemiah, why is your countenance falling? And he said, I'm here serving you and the, the walls in Jerusalem have not been rebuilt. Immediately without requesting favor at work, the king gave him everything he needed and wrote letters so that nobody will harass him on the way. Favor is powerful. You may have heard me say, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. That is the assignment of favor. There, are, there is a threefold feature of favor. If it is genuine favor, you know that favor is at work upon a man because you will see unusual kindness, unusual access, and unusual acceptance. If you do not find a cohabitation of these three forces, it was not favor unusual kindness unusual access unusual acceptance these are the biblical tests that show the presence of favor in the life of a believer one last time unusual kindness unusual access unusual acceptance so the forces that control speed dominion over time Number one, wisdom. Number two, favor. Number three, speed provoking prayers. You can pray yourself to speed. Hallelujah. In 1 Kings chapter 18, just write for reference from verse 42 to 46, the Bible talks about Elijah praying that he submitted himself and he prayed and kept telling his servant, go and look, go and look, go and look. And at the seventh time, he saw a cloud like the fist of a man's hand. And he said, tell the king, saddle your donkey, run. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And then he himself, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And the Bible says he ran on barefoot. Do you know what it means to run on barefoot and then overtake the chariots? What kind of speed would that be? Hmm. 
Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. You can lock yourself in the place of prayer and say, Lord, I need to ward off these forces that are impeding my progress. That the only thing growing in my life is my age. Nothing else is growing in my life. I, you, can, you can engage in strategic prayer. There is something about a believer that has been provoked unto righteousness. You can pray yourself. The Bible says, Jesus, listen. Jesus dismissed the apostles, the disciples now. They had used the boat and they had gone ahead of him. They were six hours ahead of him while he resorted to pray. Six hours. You would call that delay. But as soon as he was done praying, he got up and did not need a boat. He started walking and in no time he had caught up with them. To a point where they saw him and thought he was a spirit. And Peter said, if it be thou, bid me come. He said, you too can operate this dimension. Come come a boat is only one of the ways you can move there is still another technology by which men can walk upon storms a boat will require skill and effort but whilst you are walking do you believe this that you can lock yourself and pray and say father i've been in lagos for 10 years 20 years the two leaf gate of this city has not yet opened for me i can pray dominion over time dominion over time dominion over time he says and i will restore the years it is god is within his power to restore years not just things to restore years hallelujah i know many people that after covid they almost plunged to depression they lost money they lost everything till date many have not recovered let me tell you the truth I believe in process but you see you do not have all the time to crawl your way to an enviable destiny that is why God left us an advantage speed being one of them you can pray and rise up to find yourself in a realm of possibility that people will look at you and say how did you get here they will ask like Isaac how come you have gotten this so early I thought when you graduate, you wait for at least 10 or 20 years. How come in one year, they have made you the African representative of this company? What happened? And you will answer them like Jacob answered. Only that you will not be lying. What you will be saying will be the truth. That the Lord had brought this. That there is a name he is called Ebenezer. That God can choose to help a man. Listen, there are many times where blessings have been released... That's, I started that scripture to tell you that everything you will need for life and godliness has already been released in Christ. But you see, it happens through men. The manifestation of greatness is highly men dependent. This is the reason why pastor was sharing on relationships. And there are demonic forces that can stop the men to meet you. It says, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Do you know that it was the forgetfulness of one man that added two years to Joseph in the prison? We don't know how long he stayed in the prison, but one helper who forgot, somebody had a memory problem and another person was suffering it. Shout no way. No way. One more time, say no way. no way. Joseph remained in the prison. Lord, but I thought you said I should have been out by now. The man to be used to bring him out forgot. The same way you've invested in the life of so many people and they left you with promises since 1999, since 2005, they forgot. Thank God there is a mystery called the book of remembrance. The Bible says, and that night could not a hazard or sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. I don't know who I'm speaking to. You have invested in the lives of people, in the lives of companies, in the lives of many, and they have forgotten you. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, may the book of remembrance be open for you. Hallelujah. 
The Bible does not say it, but I believe with all my heart that in that prison, Joseph was praying. I don't have the time to show you, but you see, the prison is a mysterious place in destiny. It's a place where both good and bad people meet. The prison is like the cross. When you see people in the prison, don't be too quick to talk. You may be talking about Joseph or Jesus. On that cross, Jesus was there. On that cross, two thieves were there. Just because you see men on the cross, you don't know what face in destiny they are in. The prison is where both good and bad people meet. But prayer is what leaves others in the prison while others go out there. At midnight, Paul and Silas, is it not in your Bible? All of, they were not alone. But while others were lamenting, is this how our destinies will end? He said, no, I know I can do something to time. The Bible said they prayed, then they sang loud enough for everybody to hear. I'm sure they were saying, don't disturb us with this, your gibberish, these tongues you are praying. But heaven was moving and the Bible says it was not an angel that came. An earthquake. I've done a teaching on open doors. And if you care to know, let me tell you, there are three keys very quickly anytime a door is closed there are two principles for opening that door number one is by the use of right keys when you use a correct key a closed door opens number two by knocking the bible says for everyone that knocks it shall be open so you are not the one who opens it if you don't master relationships your knocking will not work because the person at the other side must be your friend for the door to be open and then number three, which is the one I want you to do this night. You don't use a right key. The urgency is too much. You don't knock. You shake the foundation and break the door. The Bible says when they sang, when the glory of God came in that prison, the door was not open. The foundation was rattled. And the Bible says all doors open. How many? All doors financial doors all doors open it didn't matter how long they had been closed because you see sometimes when you use a key and you pass the door can close your children and those behind you will still be in bondage but when you break that door the bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder listen I really want you to believe in the power of prayer you redeem time never take the time I was told graciously that you have invested so much time praying and preparing for this conference don't you ever call the ministry of prayer a waste of time many would rather sit down in front of a man's office from morning till night and he will come out and say sorry I've not seen you you just keep waiting there and they say I'm not angry I'm not offended whereas you can spend half that time with the master and then he begins to move men is God not called the father of spirits every spirit is on is subject to him hallelujah the father of spirits that you can pray why is this ministry not growing why is this business not growing why are our partners living the bible says is any man afflicted james 5 13 he didn't say let him lament let him pray let him pray luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men provided you are a man God never prayed as God, but when he became a man, he prayed all day, every time. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray. Listen, if you fold your arms and watch things no dive in your life, waiting for sympathy or modern nature or some kind of sociological coincidences to happen, for the believer, you define your possibilities. You are given access to partner with God god is provoking someone tonight he said the reason why satan seems to reign over your life is because you've not gotten angry enough to shut your door and pray yes sir you can pray seasons out of your life you can pray seasons into your life you can pray things out of your life you may not have the power 
to manipulate the unjust judge, but you can pray. He says there was a man who neither feared God nor regarded men. May you never meet such a man in your life. That must be a dangerous man. He does not fear God. He does not regard men. What kind of a man is that? I'm praying for you again. May you not find that kind of man in your life. When you find a man that fears God, you can ask God to speak to him and he will obey. When you find a man that regards men, you can use relationships as a leverage. But what do you do with a man who is a judge, meaning he's not a dummy, and yet he does not fear God, he does not regard men. And here comes a weak, supposed helpless widow, but prayer. The Bible says she told him, avenge me my adversary. And for a while he will not listen to her. But for her importunity, her persistence. The man said, even though I do not fear God, nor regard men. But this woman continues to weary me. So prayer wearies things. Everything that is a resistance, it wearies it until it releases. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's wrap up. So wisdom, favor, speed-provoking prayer. Speed-provoking prayer. I'm seeing just like fire coming on seven. In the number seven, seven people. I just said that speed-provoking prayer. And the Lord is saying that you have been kept. It's like an embargo has rested upon you and you are not able to rise i declare i don't know where you are help them please in the name of jesus christ please can you spare me five minutes pastor hallelujah in the name of jesus please bring them out for me if you can i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus everyone kaporo shadi kapaliata please bring them out for me there's a reason why i ask that you bring them out I command that devil to give way now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you, please listen. Be your brother's keeper, whether you are an usher or not. Because this grace for speed is going to rest on people. And some of them will start running physically. Please hold them. This is a sign and a wonder so they don't enjoy themselves. Lord, there are people whose destinies must speak now. Everyone who has been under the yoke of delay, I stand upon this grace in the name of Jesus. Take that grace for speed. Take that grace for speed. Take that grace for speed. Receive that grace for speed. No matter how long you have been delayed, I come by the rod of a higher priesthood in the name of Jesus. The son of the living God. Elevation. Speed. Speed. Speed in business. Speed in ministry. Ten years in one year. 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 Bring them out. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. There are families here. You have been tied down so that no man don't lift up his head. I want to release that grace in the name of Jesus. Every family that has been stagnated, go forward now. Go Go forward. 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 I prophesy, go forward. I prophesy, go forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, people of God. Your pastor has made you to invest time praying. This is the benefit of those times of prayer. This is the benefit of the prayer chain to prepare your spirit man. Hallelujah. Please be sensitive. We're wrapping up already. Hear me. Everything God has told you should have happened in your life and is yet to ha happen by whatever means. You keep seeing it prophetically, but it does not seem to manifest. In the name of Jesus, 
I stand in partnership with the grace upon your man of God and I declare let prophecy find expression let prophecy find expression let prophecy find expression please open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray in the spirit everywhere in this building begin to pray in the spirit you are stepping into a new prophetic season rising in the spirit Pray. hallelujah hallelujah i'm wrapping up listen please do not miss any session no matter what sacrifice you will make i'm lending my voice with pastor invite everybody you know in lagos if there's no space even if it's for them to stand outside they should stand outside because god is visiting even through this conference it's not just the title of a conference it's, it's the advantage that you have and there are many people who may not have this opportunity for a long time hallelujah now listen i gave you four keys i'm about to speak over those in front here. key number one is wisdom key number two is favor key number three is prayer speed provoking prayer the last key that controls speed is the prophetic Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. The Bible says, And by a prophet, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Prophetic decrees are not empty words. The prophetic, when it is engaged, within the boundary of scripture now every time i talk about the prophetic i always want to observe that i know that there are issues unfortunately with authentic prophetic ministry across nigeria and africa but that does not mean that the prophetic does not have its place you ignore the prophetic your life will be stunted almost indefinitely the prophetic jesus your jesus needed three prophets in his life for his destiny to open up number one simeon the prophet number two anna the prophetess number three john the prophet that you call the baptist hallelujah 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 the lord is opening my eyes i'm seeing an email and it's written on that email congratulations this is what i'm seeing I'm seeing an email and on that email this is what I'm seeing congratulations I don't know who that is for but in the name of Jesus I release that grace upon you for as, for as long as the Lord lives you will testify hallelujah my time is up we have more sessions tomorrow morning and then in the night all of those who are in front in the name of Jesus the son of the living God everything that is the work of darkness over your life I set you free from it now the Lord is showing me a woman I'm seeing four years you are yet to have a child this is I'm seeing the number four four years because I'm hearing the cry of a baby please help that person yes and the lord is saying i should tell you remember ye not the former things 
nor consider the things of old for behold I do a new thing in the name of Jesus according to the time of life may you stand on this stage and testify hallelujah let me wrap up by speaking over your life tonight listen there are some of you you will not reach home before receiving your miracle I hope you believe it the Bible says of the ten lepers as they went they didn't arrive the place of a priest as they went I stand in partnership with the grace upon your man of God and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus may my God who is also your God surprise you this night surprise you this night extraordinary supernatural miracles in the name of Jesus Christ and every delay retrogression everything that looks like it has put you in a position where you are a victim of time I stand by the power that raised Christ from the dead and I speak to you finally tonight be released from it now be released from it now hallelujah those in front if you can God bless you you can return to your seat now my apologies for just stretching a bit of the time please lend me a minute or two I want to make an altar call listen please I want you to listen to me everyone an altar call is beyond a call to come and stand right in front here an altar call is proof of humility it is an admission that you realize you do not have what it takes in yourself unassisted by heaven to make the most out of your destiny are we together now when we make an altar call it is not and it's not something embarrassing that you just come as though you are some victim no it's an invitation the wisest decision known according to scripture that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom and every time God gathers a people like this all the experience centers all the other expressions across the globe who are following this applies to you too and for the many who are following online here is an opportunity tonight that Jesus is giving you to make it right with him having a Christian name does not translate to salvation being a worker in church does not translate necessarily to salvation hallelujah the Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved I'm going to make two calls in one number one for someone here who is an apostle I do not want tonight to end without me making this decision I truly desire a relationship with Jesus number two for someone who is an apostle I cannot truly say that my Christian life is intact right now I need to make it right with Jesus I'm going to count one to five I expect that you should be convicted enough to not think about it and delay your destiny as I count one to five wherever you are within this auditorium run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here I begin my counting now one are we celebrating them two come to Jesus win that war finally Give your destiny a chance for beauty and glory. Come. Three. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed or afraid of my friends. Come. Leave them and make it right with Jesus. Come. Someone is running to Jesus. Come. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. I see a few people still coming. Please come. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. If the space is occupied, you can stand. You don't have to kneel. Hallelujah. Now. Those of you who are here in front, I salute you. Thank you very much for this bold decision that you have made. This is unto Jesus. This is for the sake of your destiny. Jesus said the, in, uh, the apostles in Acts chapter 3, they were caught to the heart and they said, Men and brethren, what should we do? 
it says believe repent for the remission of your sins and that you shall have this promise it says it is unto you and to your children your children's children even as many as are far off them that the lord will call i'm going to lead you to pray a prayer and then the counselors will now direct you hallelujah for those who are making this decision all across the experience centers i believe that there might be officials there to help you and then you can make use of the social media platforms let um, the officials here the media team or those involved let them know that you are making a decision for jesus and i believe that there will be people who have been trained to follow up with you hallelujah those in front may i please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender high above your head and say this after me say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that i'm a child of god from today and forever amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this ones you have brought called by your spirit i declare by the authority of scripture your sins are forgiven and in the name of jesus i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus name amen now um there are counselors are they going to receive okay now here's what you do for me all of you while we appreciate them there's a counselor lifting the placards please i want you to just follow them the counselors will have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them as they go thank you let's celebrate them as they go